We're good. Uh, From now. <laughs> Thank Jeff. you for being here with us tonight. We are Legends of Evandris, and we will see you in the mist. good story needs a proper villain, at least in the humble opinion of this wayward vagrant. I had never been the type of those avant-garde metaphorical stories where there is no good and no evil, and the villain is some abstract concept. It doesn't appeal to me. Besides, if there's one thing I know in this life and the next and all those to follow, evil does exist. And it's here, in Druskenbald, everywhere. But no more strongly than here, right in front of our band of strangers who are just trying to do a bit of good in the face of this overwhelming evil. If I was them, I'd be shaking in my slimy, hole-filled boots. You are standing in this outcropping, in what had been the forest that had been trying to inch, edge, ever closer to you <gasps> as you were protected by the ritual that you had done the connection with the higher powers that own bits of your souls and it was able to keep it out for a time but upon the ending of visiting the memories that resided within your grip you were not brought back to that place that safe spot that you had found but instead to this glade here where the trees with their gnarled arms look like they're almost in the midst of a scream as they reach out for help all towards you in the darkness of the night. And standing in front of you is a woman that none of you have ever met, but you all know upon seeing her immediately and hearing her voice exactly who this is. Over her, almost shrouding her in darkness is the what had felt like for a while a myth, this giant black goat with piercing red eyes. And it makes very little sound, but it guards over her almost as if it's protecting of her, protective of her. And its eyes dart back and forth between all of you and Flora. <laughs> and that's what draws your attention. Flora, almost frozen, shaking, horrified, scared, her ears completely drooped over as she looks up at this image in front of you as this woman, Mother Midnight, speaks out to you. And she finishes her villain's monologue and looks between all of you. I think that it is time we had a chat between all of us. Here in my land, this is a place my tendrils reach. No matter where you go, I will find you. Always. My babies. My sacrifice. Where exactly are we? In oh, the land of Druskenvold, of course. I meant more presently, but... I'll pull up my... Oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> Please pull the trigger. Let's see what happens, Briggsy. I have a feeling that it's most likely not going to do anything. 
We are in a place of your making. <coughs> I can't believe you would reach out to the entities that have placed their mark on you. These evil, horrible, in most cases, entities. She lingers on Char a little bit, or on uh, Lethka a little bit, and you see a smile, a light on her face. All of you begging them to protect you in my land. <laughs> You know not what you have done. Things will not go as you have planned. But you tried. And as a mother, I have to appreciate when my babies, my sacrifice, when they try. Oh, are, are we your children too? Are we the, the 13th and 14th and 15th and 16th? and the 17th and the 18th daughter. Does that add up? <laughs> you you see the smile on her face. You are not my daughters, oh. no. But everyone in the land of Druskin Bald is a child of Mother Midnight. So, so what do you want from us, Seb? She looks at you, and you see, roll a an insight check. That'll do it. Oh, pretty wow. good. Twenty. <laughs> you you see you see a look of surprise on her face, almost. Um, as if she herself is wondering this question as well. I know that you have a part to play in this realm. You cannot stop the Night of Sin. It is coming. We are on its doorstep. When exactly, perhaps? Like, is it, is it tonight? Tomorrow? The day after? Tomorrow night at the Witching Hour. The night of sin, and then rebirth. It is as I will it. It is as the land commands. I find myself intrigued by the six of you. You have done so much. You failed the, the Hag Coven. And though they assisted me with my Night of Sin, they had lofty dreams they could never achieve. My daughters are from me, they are of me. Those hags could never wish to have what my daughters have. But they did help very much to bring about this night. They were strong, and you killed them. But it does ease a little of my worry. Three angry hags not getting what they believe are their just desserts is not something I have to deal with any longer. Well, if you... If, if you so many daughters and you didn't... You just needed hags to help you with, where, where the fuck are you? All, all twelve of them. Do you have twelve daughters? She smiles brightly, the smile of a mother's love. Oh, my daughters, the work they do is very important. It was the first plan. It was for a while the only plan. Until the new plan, the Night of Sin. It is simply a way around the first plan. I will get to see my daughters again. They have been so long toiling in the other regions of Droskenvold, doing their mother's work. I miss them. I love them. But now they will be able to come home. <coughs> For the Night of Sin will grant us the moonlit rebirth. And their work will be done. Surely you must forgive us if we don't just simply roll over and accept that there's nothing we can do to stop this. I did not expect as much. For you see, 
It is so easy to manipulate the mind, the minds of mortals like yourselves and like the city of Cyril, the entirety of Druskenfold. I see you think you are fighting for the right side. But do you even know what reality is here, Marius? I will show you. And she raises her arms and you feel a gust of wind and mist begin to swirl around you. And all of you, you all feel lightheaded, a, a bit of vertigo for a moment, as all of a sudden your vision completely fades. And you are looking in to a house, a house you're all very familiar with. And you see two little girls sitting inside of a cupboard. One of them fast asleep, little Colette. The other one, uh, Sorry, I almost called her something else. Uh, Anya. The other one, Anya. And you watch as Anya taps her foot, looking a little bit restless. And then all of a sudden, it shifts and changes. And you see that the door to this cabinet is now open. Only one girl remains inside. Little Colette, sleeping on the floor of, the, on the floor of this closet. And then you hear the sound of footsteps as Maggie McDuff, covered in a cloak, makes her way into the house, and she looks down, and you hear her call out, but I thought there were supposed to be two little. And then her eyes flash for a second. Oh, yep, the one little girl, just as I need to get. And she picks her up and pulls her into her arms. And as Colette opens her eyes, surprised, she looks up. But where's? Oh, never mind. I'm so glad you came to get me. I'm so scared. Get me home. Get me somewhere safe. I'll do that just as quickly as I can, little one. She wraps her in a bundle and quickly heads out of the house, shutting, shutting the cabinet door behind her. And it sits on this house for a while. Quiet, silence, no sounds of anything at all. And then your eyes begin to slowly make out the, for <clears throat> the forms of the trees encroaching on your mind again as you are, as you come to in, in this room, in this glade of, as Mother Midnight says it, your own making. Do you see how easy it is for minds to be played with, to be talked with? She even said it herself, did she not? I did exactly as I was told. Unfortunately for one Miss Macduff, her mind could not be trusted. How are we supposed to trust you? Did I ask for your trust? trust? I'm simply telling you what is going to happen tomorrow night when the moonlit rebirth is finally brought to, to, to fruition and my sacrifice. All of the sacrifices of Cyril bring forth that which is necessary for this land, for me. You have Anya. <laughs> me no. I do not have Anya. But neither do you. You see, there is a magic in orphans' blood. M most orphans do not know this. I don't even think your little Anya knows this. But there is someone in Cyril who does know this. You ask. If I can be trusted, I've answered your questions. I've shown you things that you had been shielded from, blinded by. And I would yet offer you more. You simply have to ask. For you see, I have no doubt that tomorrow will succeed. I got a question I've been doodling on this entire time. Jericho, please, I ask one favor. Y yes? You do not sing your question. Oh, gosh, I had a whole number prepared. <laughs> Even a little bit of a... But the, anyways, are you a part snake? No. What? Scott. Of course, everyone was talking about cutting off a head of a snake. I thought that she, was, <laughs> she would show up and suddenly there'd be a big head of a snake. We'd you have to refer it to the figurehead of Druskenfold, the silly man in the mansion. 
be Lord Philip, the most powerful man in all of the land. And yet, here I stand. Yeah, well, he doesn't like you very much, and that's why he gathered us together. Because he has something you want, the little trinkets he keeps in his treasure room. He does, and you've corroborated everything he said so far. And you know, some of me chaps here, they didn't trust him so much. But now I'm glad that I'm going to be the last one laughing because he intends to make good on his deal. He uh, wants, he allegedly. wants to, he wants to celebrate a party so that they can make his little wife happy. I mean, do you blame him? I do not, for tomorrow is the night of the rebirth. He brought you together to stop me, but you have not. You have simply escalated the timeline. You've played into my hands. You've given me what I wanted. Because you did not look deeper, harder. You did not ask the right questions. You trusted, as most heroes will do, in the good. Never once thinking the good was evil all along. I don't think most of these folks are, are as evil as you think they are. I think they're just uh, having, a r having a rough week. Month. Year. Period of time. <clears throat> Jericho's point stands. Whatever this reality is that you refer to and might be able to manipulate at your will, Good is still good, and that is what we fight for. Fight hard, little ones, my sacrifice. The Coven of the Midnight Moon will be successful tomorrow. Of that I have no doubt. And the clock ticks. Well, who's to say we're not going to stop it? Huh? Who? You? Yes. And what if we do stop it? What then? Then my daughters will continue to work. They will continue my efforts. There will be a moonlit rebirth. And there is nothing you can do to stop it in the end. Well, the reason I'll bring it up is let's say we don't get in the way and we let the whole thing go off without a hitch. What are you willing to do for us? Brings it. Absolutely nothing. No, right. Briggs, are you seriously are you seriously becoming part the, the perhaps the neck of the Psst. snake? Oh Psst. Psst. No. You're <clears throat> you're not needed for my plan to continue. Right, no. You are simply a nuisance. An intriguing one at that. I find the connections you have with these greater beings a little funny. That you would so easily call on them to help you in a strange land for people who've done nothing but spurn you. And yet here you are, making your tether stronger, pulling them ever closer to you to save who? The citizens of Cyril? The land of Druskenvog? What makes you think that when the moonlit rebirth is completed, things would not be better here than before? That's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 who's, who's getting re who's getting rebirth then? Is it you? What's so bad about it anyways? It sounds very ominous, but I guess we don't have too many details. <laughs> Everyone's gonna turn into horrible sin zombies. Oh uh, yeah, what he said. Oh, be, consumed, be consumed by Demon Baylor. Allegedly. Be mindless abominations to do the will of, you know. Oh, that's right. She's not calling us her old pals. She's calling us her sacrifices. You do not have agency here. You are but dolls in a playroom. Characters in a storybook. This is my fairy tale. You merely exist on the pages. 
You have no control over what happens. If you would like to try, I would happily watch. It gives me something to pass the time until the ritual begins. And should you succeed, though the chances are very small. I pause and let the tea drink off the This is a friendly <laughs> elephant in the corner that's playing a tune. Being for the follow hot thing goes with the red eyes, eyes on hinges, hinges its mouth yeah. and the sound comes out. <laughs> Oh yeah, the giant goat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah, and all the while you notice that this goat is not really moving. I mean, you can see that it's moving. You can see that it's breathing. It's clearly alive, but it it just shrouds her. And I would say, with your perception roll, you can tell she takes comfort in knowing that it is so close. Quick question: Is it clear that this goat is the? Beast it is gigantic. And it's, do we think it that's is, the it thing is quite the clearly woods? like down on the ground, and its head is still towering over her. Oh. Like a sphinx, like lying yes, down. essentially, it is on the ground, and it is still towering over her. You're answering questions. Why allow us to even reach out to these? Entities in the first place. If, if you're so strong, why not block them? Are they stronger than you? <laughs> Your entities, no. They would be my equal, I would say. But not in my land. Were they to make their way to manifest here, even all six combined would be no match for Mother Midnight, especially with her twelve daughters. I am not concerned of them. They will have what they want, and it is not me. What they want is you. I can smell her perfume on you, Marius. Even now, how many years has it been? And yet, the scent of her flesh still overpowers the scent of yours. One mistake, and you've paid for it every day since. That is not something I have done to you. Name one thing that Mother Midnight has done to you. Now the hags that worked on their own accord, hoping for my favor, they have done many things to you. But what has Mother Midnight done to her sacrifice? Oh, nothing. Not yet, at least. Oh, don't, don't take, don't take Virgil. Oh, no. <laughs> don't, don't take him out of my, he's, he's right here, he's right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, gosh. That'd be terrible if I lost such a power. She just stares at you. She doesn't flinch, she doesn't seem scared at all. Even as your hand gets closer and closer to where the lock is, she doesn't even, uh, not a single that, line on her face seems uncomfortable. I'm implying that I hear that if she has some way to rip Jerry right. yes. Virgil out, yeah. but he would <clears throat> be very sad about it. <laughs> I understand what you imply, but <clears throat> Briggsy asked the question already. What would I give you for your allegiance? Nothing, for I do not need it. You belong to someone else. Not to me. Though you've had a little of my protection in this land. I have grown fond of you. Some more than others. And I give you the opportunity to have questions answered. To learn things. And you... Cower at the base of the tree line. Afraid to speak. We don't have all the time in the world. Mother has things to prepare. I think we've been quite talkative. Only, only Lethica is here, is here cowering. That's, we're five out of six being brave speaking to you. And there's a really big fucking goat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you see as she looks up and the smile on her face is one of tenderness and compassion. Yes, it is. My dark prince. Um, is Prince? Like literally or figuratively like a, you're a very proud pet owner. 
She blinks at you. Legitimate question. I guess it would depend on who you ask. But for me, it is a an affectionate term of endearment. Though, should you hear him behind you in the woods, I would make note of it and do nothing to incur his ire. You like your gross familiar? She smiles. And she looks down at Flora, and you see a look of repulsion on her face for just a second. And then she says, Yes, similar, but vastly different. I mean, I can see the difference. Well, I think it is about time she looks up towards a moon that you see slowly cresting down into the uh, the line of trees. Now, are you a grimacy question? <laughs> It is almost time for me to go. Before so, you go. I will leave you with two bits of information. I will leave you with one bit of information. Damn it. And you see her raise her hands again as the mist fills the glade one more time in your eyes. Once again, uh, you start to get dizzy and your eyes roll back in your heads and you're now looking into a stone room and at first it appears to just be a stone room as your eyes are adjusting to the light. And then you see in the very center of this stone room that strange arcanic symbol magic on the floor. Off to the side, you see a beheaded goat's body. And in the very center of the room, bound, gagged, is Anya. Oh, good. And just as you begin to focus in on her, you can see the tear, the the dried up tears that have been falling down her face. You can see where the um, where the ropes have been digging into her wrists and rubbing them raw. And just as you're really getting a good view of it, the um, the change begins to to take hold again, and you feel yourselves once again with the trees coming in around you, and Mother Midnight standing in front of you. I have given you what you need to find your little friend. As I've said, the orphan's blood is special. And my hands are not the only ones getting dirty in Cyril. Though the little creatures beneath the cathedral are conduits and nothing more. For me, there may be others who want something of their own. But who is to say? You know where she is, witch. Tell us where. Who has her? And I just gave you the tools you need. Think on the image. You will know the stones. You have seen them many a time before. I'll say it's very clear to you that they appear to be cathedral stones. Oh. The same color, the same size as inside of the cathedral. <clears throat> well, what I was going to say was... Do we look like fucking dwarves to you? <laughs> she looks at you a little confused. No. Well, I, I, no, I think the cathedral stones. Uh, I, I know it's stones that's on in mind. I take it back. <clears throat> I just don't understand. Why even take the time to come tell us this if we're so inconsequential? You have done things that have surprised me. And with my daughters gone, doing their duties, I have come to see you as family. Each of you has a part to play. Whether it ends tomorrow night, who knows? We are... You are right about one thing. Uh, we are a family, but we ain't taking applications, so we're, we're, we're capping it at six. Sorry. She, she smiles unless, unless at you. Unless your daughters are pretty, and then we, we can talk. Jericho, that's enough. <laughs> okay. A union of marriage. You had a very good point. Just leave it. Every single one of my progeny is beautiful in her own way. Oh, uh, it's a good personality. <laughs> Uh, some of them lack in that regard, but mother loves them all. 
But to expand upon your question, with this pleasant conversation comes a warning. Tool with the magic of the land all you want and with the dark entities that have you chained to them. But never forget, this land belongs to me. And I am in it all. And as she says these words, the giant black goat head rises up even further. Its mouth opens and it lunges down as if to swallow all of you whole. But instead, it swallows up Mother Midnight. And quickly, in a, in a moment, you see the hag moon drop down and begin to cackle. As all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, they disperse into nothingness. As you're standing in this glade, completely alone, you can still smell her scent lingering. It's almost like a spicy scent of incense and smoke. And the wet fur of the black goat still uh, perpetuating in the air, little bits of it here and there, floating in the mist. Is Flora still there? She is. Why didn't she tell us? But the child wasn't there. We asked if she took two children. I don't know why you're asking me this question. I think it was pretty self-explanatory. Am I crazy? Did we not ask that she took two children? And she responded with she did exactly as she was told. And she did. Ask her again now. I don't even know where we are. I can't talk to her here. Maggie's mind was changed by Mother Midnight. She thought she was only to find one child. For people playing D&D, there's a spell called Modify Memory. And so I will pull back the veil and say for those that may be confused, that is more than likely, no, not confirming or denying, a spell that would have been used on Maggie to modify what she was told to do, as well as Colette. This Mother Midnight holds great domain over life and death in this plane. She was able to see through the illusions of the witches, like like Maggie Macduff's and, and, and her hidden cabinet. She was able to see all of it. She may even still be listening to us now, watching our every move, hearing our every word. Gosh, I should have asked her if what was what if everybody seeing the the Hag Moon go away was just. Our own imagination being manipulated by Mother Midnight. Oh, I want to get out of here. I want to get back to the house. I think... Can you get us back? Uh, well, Maggie didn't tell me how to deal with something like this. I don't even think she thought herself that something like this could happen. So, um, I saw it in a major image once where... Someone wanted to get home really badly, and so what she did was she clicked her heels together three times and said there's no place like home, and I don't think that would work. Maybe? Do you think it would work? I don't know. Anyway, what if we just, what if we all held hands and just thought about where we came from really, really, really hard and wished for it, willed it, and maybe it would work? You see her ears are still droopy, and she's clearly, like, shaking, shaking, shaking. I think you're onto something. Maybe not in the exact vein with your suggesting. But I'm not entirely sure that I believe everything that Mother Midnight said. She was very blasé about these people, these entities that watch over us. I'm not so sure that six on one is anything that she wants to deal with. And she thinks that these entities are just as powerful than, uh, uh, just as powerful as her. And they can't seem to, to, you know, barely poke into this realm. My point is maybe they can get us back. And I'm, I'm just thinking, you don't keep tabs on people like us if we're not if we're just so inconsequential. That's exactly right. I feel nothing but hope, having heard her words. I am in complete agreement with you. I certainly do not like the person watching over me who's claimed my soul. But I'm not so sure Mother Midnight knows who she's dealing with. Let us find ways to surprise her again. And I'll, I'll walk over to Flora. And seeing that she's shivering, afraid, ears down, I'll open my arms as if to say, will you, you know, as if to say, will, will she jump up? Will she come in for a, for a hug so I can pick her up? 
Flora. Yeah? Come, you have a good suggestion. Are you gonna yell at me like Farron did? Because I'm not a witch and I don't know any of the answers. I'm not I'm sorry to... I yelled at you. It's okay, you're, you're still really cute though. I'm not Thank going you. to yell. I'm going to. Pick Are you going to eat me? So that we can all join together. You, we just survived an encounter with Mother Midnight. We should I don't even so... think we can eat you. You're a spirit guardian. <laughs> yeah, probably not, but maybe you could. I don't know. Do they make seared spirit rabbit soup? Oh. We promise. I promise that we will not eat you. I'm not so worried about you because you eat that weird moldy stuff and That's I'm true. made of. Uh, I don't know. Ghost stuff? Yeah. If you want to hold me, you can. If it'll make you feel better. I pick her up and give her a very tight hug. Oh, I only feel better because clearly you do too. Thank you, yes, thank you. <clears throat> she feels very soft. We need to get our way back to Anya. We have to hurry. It is bait. We are being lured. It doesn't matter what it is. No, I agree. If we have a chance to save that girl, we have to do it. It is effective bait. Let us try Flora's suggestion. All right. We just gather round and try to put this in reverse, maybe. So, um, we just all hold hands or hug each other or, you know, just hug each other. And then that's Three probably eight. the best. More physical uh, contact, you know, not because we're scared, but because we need it. Right. And we're just going to think to ourselves, we're going to manifest. That's what Maggie says. We're going to manifest that warm place in that basement with all that fire and the sweet smells. Let's just manifest right now. I will also click my heels together. Sure, do you have ruby shoes worth a thousand gold pieces? They're very nice boots. I don't think it'll work then, but go ahead. Okay, ready? Manifest now! Are you doing it? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, okay, we're we'll still yes. doing it. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna shut up. I mean, is there like a word we need to say or some weird chant, like ritual thing? Should we say like earth? I don't know. Water, I don't know. heart, you know? Did it work? Someone opened their eyes. Oh. We're back! <laughs> Woo! And you open your eyes and see that you are in fact Woo! back. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I know that I was seconding uh, the, the familiar's suggestion, but I really didn't think it was going to work. Uh, we need to hurry. We we have one more thing we must do before we we must complete the ritual. Why we went to that plane in the first place. I, you, 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 you did complete the ritual. You have not granted your grin. Look, I have fur again! No, 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 no. When you changed color and you gave us all the... We did not have the opportunity because we were interrupted by Mother Midnight. You know, you need to touch your grim to finish the ritual. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well... I don't want to eat the rabbit. Well, Judge me. Well, your grim, this is where we she pop She touches ways. her paw up to you and her fur doesn't change in any way whatsoever. Oh. You know, oh, it's been no. real. No woolly mammoth. We had some good times. No color changing uh, rabbit. You but know? you know... <laughs> I think. Just please see yourself out. And it's not just because I have the God of the World in my head. I think that it was really just confirming that you had completed it and that it wasn't necessary to complete it. No, I am sorry, Yorgrim. You're going to die now. No, yes. I don't care either way. She can have my soul as long as we get to Anya. Well. Well, I, 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 I'm very, I'm very concerned that we don't really have a good plan. To get to Anya, we don't know. We just saw and a cathedral stone. You need to take at least two hours. Why? Because I'm what? stuck here for two hours. I don't want to be alone. Well, you, you can come with us, but we certainly do I not have that time to wait. I have to stay in the house, otherwise the magic fades and I go into a pocket dimension all by myself. Um. <laughs> Well, that's fine. You can come with us. It'll be perfectly safe and not scary. We're only going to a horrible demon land. Us, she just said she cannot leave the house. Oh. <laughs> uh, to your point, Jericho, as far as the plan goes, we go to the cathedral, we kick in the doors, and we find the girl. There's, there's no other way around it. Now's the perfect time. The guards are in complete disarray. The entire city has fallen into chaos. But not us. We need to be ready for who's going to be there. Whoever took her. 
And that's exactly right. And just as I'm sure Yorgrim is thinking and I'm vocalizing, we'll cut down anyone who gets in our way. Good. Uh, we're ready. The girl's been through enough. Sorry, that... you have to be strong. You're a spirit guardian. And a familiar. I'm a bunny. And a bunny. I like carrots. Carrots and I'm can be through sharpened. fields of grass. <laughs> Harm yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you trying to give a small thing? I don't know. That's just what I do. <laughs> she just wants to give the rabbit a okay, carrot let's sword. Go. You know, a knight. How cool would that sword. be? Uh, a little radish shield and a carrot oh sword. My God. A Gatlin gun. Oh, she eats carrots. Blueberries. Things you use to protect your thumb. Uh, thimble. 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 Yeah, thimble for a shield. Aww. Uh, after that, please that journey over the rainbow of me. colors from the candles, I I thought we'd be greeted by some, some gnomes that would say, we resemble but are legally distinct from the lollipop guild. <laughs> 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 oh gosh, I'm that glad was that my that favorite didn't... song in the major image. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, I burp when I'm nervous. <laughs> Flora. Just They're the also paper. contagious, so sorry, Farron. I think we can take a few hours to talk about our plan here and to ready ourselves for the coming day. We have until tomorrow night. Wait, if if Anya has anything to do with the Night of Sin, you saw her, the, the dried tears on her face. As I said, she's I, been there long enough. I think that she is there because she is someone we care about. Wait a minute, is it tomorrow? Do we even know what time it is? I, I would say you do know what time it is. You know that when you were making, I would say the candles that are still burning, they look like they haven't burnt down at all since you left. Um, it is very clear that it would be tomorrow night, so you do have time to come up with a plan um, that um, the townsfolk were waiting on the archbishop to give them mm. uh, an excuse to go out and hunt down Magamic. These are these are the things on your on your table. Um, Billy uh, William Van Brunt is trying to get a group of people to go out and kill Maggie McDuff, and they want a blessing um, from the archbishop. But they right? will not leave because even though Billy doesn't care, the rest of the town cares about the archbishop. They're not going to leave without his permission. Period. And Billy knows that, and so he's waiting and making it seem like this big thing. Um, the Archbishop is apparently holed up in the cathedral, um, awaiting some kind of um, announcement that he's going to be giving. Right. Um, and you don't know if the vision that you saw of Anya was in that exact moment, earlier in the day, or a vision of what's to come, is what I will say. Oh. But you, it was easy to be able to tell that that room, that stone room, was clearly in the depths of the cathedral. Uh, there were no windows. Uh, there was there was dampness on the walls, like there would be in some uh, subterranean stone basement or cavern, etc. Um, there was the symbols on the ground. There was a stake in the middle of the room. Anya was lying next to it, and there was clearly a decapitated goat that was off to the side. Um, you could contact Maggie McDuff. You have yeah, her in your back that was pocket. Be my next suggestion. Um, and so far, as far as you know, no one is coming to bother this house, but you did hear whispers on the way of people talking about trashing the Keziah Jenkins house. And so you know that this is, at this moment, this is your only place of safety and respite. And so you don't, you have maybe a couple of hours of safety in here to converse with each other, talk about the things that had happened, come up with your plan before you're more than likely uh, going to be kicked out by the DM and the uh, <laughs> citizens of Cyril. Well, let's yeah. be let's be realistic here. I mean, the house is what's keeping the city of Cyril safe from us, of course, right? <laughs> Not the other way around. I agree. Yes, and yes. so that's kind of the overview of kind of big picture what's going on. With I mean, it's right awfully now. presumptuous of you that they would all line up in an alley and come at us one by one, you know? Oh, I don't need to presume that. This won't be my first or last, certainly last bloody campaign I've been dealt with, all right? Uh, that's fair. Can't we just spend the next two hours home aloneing this house with little micro machines <laughs> next to the bottom of the stairs and paint cans? Actually, I propose that we contact Maggie and see if she can be convinced that 
there were two childs and not one. Well, I'm, I'm sure that she will, you know, believe what Children. we have. She'll believe what we have to say. I mean, she's not going to think that we'll. She might think we're lying, but we'll we'll explain what happened. But ultimately, I'm with Yorgrim. We are not. We're short on time, and the sooner that we get moving, the better. Let's talk to her and see what she has to say. She might be able to tell us about whoever took the Lomia. For what purpose they will want with an orphan's blood. I worry that it is a deception. We could find out that Anya is safe with Maggie right now, and that we were just being lured. Well, I mean, remember with how we asked her, there was some weirdness going on where she was like, yeah, I did what you asked me to. And it wasn't like, oh yeah, I definitely have two children. One is named Colette, the other one's name is Anya. We yes. never got that from her. I worry less that it is a deception than more that it is a reality. Maggie. <clears throat> uh, Flo. Ma- yeah, okay. Can you can you convey this info? Did you see the vision that we saw of Anya on the floor? Mm, the child? Yeah. Can you convey that to Maggie and ask? But you really see it because you don't seem sure. Well, as the DM, I was thinking about saying no, and then I realized that as Floor, I've already talked to you about your vision, so clearly I saw it. Oh, I see. Yep. We relay all of it. Must be confusing. (laughs) Yeah, it really is sometimes when you got a lot of people in your head. We barely avoided a plot hole there, so good job. Yep, so hold on. And I see as her ears go down over her eyes. (laughs) Her ears go down over her eyes, and she you see as she Ah, yeah. Ah. Two hours pass. <laughs> Laura, they're knocking on the door. <laughs> I think. I think this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please hurry. I'm we'll sorry. have to kill them all. What was the question again? <laughs> Jordan takes a shovel. Uh-huh. Splat. <laughs> Right next to the egg. (laughs) (laughs) The question was whether or not she was aware that there were two children. One one named Anya. That we asked her to take two children to check her Oh, well, I didn't ask her that question. I told her about the dream thing that we saw, and she said very clearly that she was only asked to pick up one child and when she got to the house the door was open to that little cabinet there was one child named colette yes. sleeping on the floor yes. and she picked her up yes. and she said that there was a moment where the little girl seemed very confused and tried started to mention something about another little girl but then she said that she shook her head and said she didn't know what she was talking about she must have been dreaming that there was only one girl and it was her but you saw that there were two children in that vision, yeah, created by a witch. And so you have to convey this to Maggie and tell her that she may be mistaken. Is there any way that she can check her memory or try to undo the magics that she may have been charmed by? So what question you want me to ask? Convey the vision <laughs> so that she understands that there were two children. Actually, we may have our just, answer. It doesn't matter. We have our answer. Just ask her who would benefit from orphan's blood so we know who to kill. Oh, See, that's a question. Oh, Starting gosh. off with convey to her, I don't know how to do that. You can't just touch Just do your rabbit question. thing and ask her about the orphan blood. Can I insight check her as well? <laughs> oh my Flora? god. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm all on my own sword. Don't think you're the same thing. <laughs> you don't want to do this. If you roll low, well, you're not going to trust anything. Hold on, here we go. Huh? Oh. she doesn't know because she's never heard anything about orphan blood being special in any way I mean, we know where she is or we have a very good idea of where she is it is very likely we're going to run into the archbishop she uh, specifically said that um the thing about orphans is they don't have any family and that 
that shouldn't change their blood at all because not having any family doesn't start when you're born in most cases. She has a point. I mean, like, at least as far as the logic of it goes. But I... you also have, she also said that she is, oh, she is a woman of the woods and so she works with natural magic, that this could be some kind of creepy, like, you know, spooky witch magic and that they can do, like, maybe for them orphan's blood because of the pain or something in it could do something, I don't know. Ask her if she knows of anyone else in the town practicing craft of any kind. Oh, I'm more exhausted. All right, hold on. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. Uh-huh. Is that why they burned the orphan? Uh-huh. To do that? I mean, it certainly seems oh. like there would be more power mm. in sacrificing orphans if that is the case. Yes. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Hold that thought because I don't want to hit you know in case she shows oh. up okay. with some information that's actually useful. I think useful. probably got about 15 minutes. Oh, well, anyway, <laughs> okay. that's oh, a great mm-hmm. point. Hmm. That's a whole and she keeps talking okay. about sacrifice. So what she said, wait, what was the question? Is there anyone else in the town <laughs> practicing any kind of witchcraft? Uh-huh. No. Not that she knows of. You. But you don't even realize it. She keeps talking about sacrifice. Not me! No, not you. Oh. Her. Okay. You were trying to incite me? What was that dice that it said? <laughs> It was a 22. <laughs> Great. I seem like I'm being super sincere. And that you're actually talking to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yes. totes, absolutely. Totally. Yeah. Well, at least she believes she's talking to Maggie McDuff. Oh, yeah, at least God. with a 22, you totally believe it. I, I guess. Listen, everyone. The more that we begin to second guess ourselves and doubt, the farther down these no uh, no offense <gasps> rabbit say, holes <laughs> we're going to go. All right. We know what we have to do. Wait, but if we think that she thinks that we think that she thinks that oh, we we don't have time for this. Talking it. <laughs> don't you understand, your group? She made everyone think that the moon was a okay and that the head of the snake. Her mind tricks are so powerful, she could probably convince everyone that Republic credits would be fine. <laughs> what? Listen, the, the point stands that Yorgrim, I'm going to say it for a fourth time, Yorgrim is right. We have to go. There's there's no reason so to delay. What are you gonna do? I don't want you to die. Oh gosh, no, golly no. gee. I just don't Please. know what I'd do if you died. Hold on. I don't like want an hour you to ago. die. <laughs> Why would she even care? Well, she's like a she, I'm I mean, an extension like of an extension. Maggie McDowell. Oh, I, I know that she likes you. Even you, Lethica. <laughs> 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 I propose that we move as quickly as we can once we decide where we are moving. We're going to the cathedral. Well, look, look, look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unlike the rest of you, I'm coming up with a fucking scheme, all right? I have a plan. Please. No, oh, no. What's your plan? We Lay know it on that the jail us. was on high alert. They were all around the city. We don't know the security detail of the cathedral. You understand? Fair. Two different sources of protection, but... We do know that at some point tonight, I think, correct me if I'm misremembering, but at some point tonight, the bishop's going to come out and give some grand fucking address to, to Billy Bones and his goons, all right? And during that time, presumably, whatever security detail he has will be with him. And at that point, the cathedral will be less guarded. We sneak behind the bishop. We go inside the cathedral. And You're going to there. try to sneak behind the bishop when he's giving an announcement to an angry mob to go kill Maggie McDuff. Uh, Flora took the words right out of my mouth. We're going I, through the bell tower. I appreciate. Exactly right. We have I, a contact in there already. I appreciate the the plan. I think that you're you're forward thinking. I certainly I mean, don't want no to get to a point where the where the, where the Archbishop has given uh, Van Brunt uh, free reign to go murder people. I would like to get ahead of that. There are no was... stupid ideas, Briggsy, but that was a dumb one. I don't think I said stupid of an idea. It's, it's not. It's not stupid at all. No, I, do think no I just said it wasn't again. stupid, but it was a dumb one. What, we're going to just fight our way in and kill every fucking god in town and then no, kill every fucking townsperson in town? <laughs> yes, I actually think that that's, that's not completely unreasonable. 
I would propose. If you're just gonna kill all the townspeople, why don't you just let Mother Midnight do what she's exactly doing? Exactly right. I'm sort of like, you know, she's making sense. <laughs> we have a relationship with the Archbishop. What if we go and and attempt to speak with him and see if we can get his attention, see if we can meet him in private? We may be able to prevent him from giving the speech altogether. We may be able to stop him from giving Von Brunt permission to find Smaggy, confronting... Her name's Maggie. Why do you keep calling her Smaggy? <laughs> Maggie. Mm, I've got these... You look at her ears and they're turned towards you. I heard what I heard. They're still smaller than mine. Oh. What is that? What? <laughs> Have you ever seen rabbit ears before? Do you Got need a measuring tape? <laughs> the point is, is that we, uh, are I propose that we kill Smaggy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling her you said that. Well, so here, here's yeah. here's the, the question. We don't have any idea. We've been up, holed up in this here basement in the magical, metaphorical land of fog. We don't know the state of the town. We're the town's folk. That's exactly right. I agree. 100%. It's meaningfully important. <laughs> so we, so we I, step outside. No and take time has show. passed. Mm. Well, so we've been gone also, 60 yeah. seconds. They also, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so that appears to be the case. The egg is still wet. Ew. We can just start making our way over to the cathedral. We can see the state of the town. And once we get there, we'll see if we can just walk into the cathedral. If there is a security detail, we'll... Like you said, maybe leverage the personal relationship we have with the Archbishop and go from there. Well, I'm going to peek out the window. Yes, no, I don't hate your group's plan of going into <laughs> the bell tower. There is no go option to peek out the windows. All of the windows are boarded up. I would like you to roll a perception check, though. We are about to get burned alive in the, in the Kaziah Jenkins hut. A Molotov cocktail. Yeah, just right through, through the window. Uh, I bat it fire. back. 14. <laughs> that would count. Kind of no, no, no. Uh, 14. 14. That's... That's more than good enough for you as you get closer to the That's window, where you can see the glass had already been broken out of it, but is now just boards that are that are keeping it closed that you know the uh, town's guard had put up after the death of Kasaya Jenkins, and you are able to hear as you get as you get closer to the window, you're able to hear shouts, uh, screams, and yelling. Uh, you're also able to see through a tiny um, split between two boards, flickering torchlight. As you hear what sounds like uh, "kill, uh, kill the witches, kill the witches, kill the witches," and their and their familiars, and it's getting louder and louder and louder. Um, you. <laughs> <laughs> What? Continue, Dina. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, Jared, they're just going to describe this. No. Um, you also, uh, you also hear things. Um, you also hear the things along the lines of um, uh, "death to the city's heroes" yelled out with disdain, oh, and the sound of a bunch of people spitting. Very mixed um, message. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, spit. I would say you you can hear bits of uh, indiscriminate chatter from people who've made their way ahead of the mob. Um, someone calling out, they gotta be in here, there are lights on inside. They're hiding out in the witch's house, burn, burn the house. And then you begin to start hearing the sounds of people running. Uh, I'll like peek through and I'll say, oh, uh, good news. Uh, th they're on our side. They're gonna murder the witch and all of their minions and the familiars. Wait, 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 what? We, we've about? already done that. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think they mean us. <laughs> I really like this house. It's too bad. <laughs> well, no. So it's gonna walk over to the cathedral. Right? Maybe, they, yes, maybe they mean a different witch's house. Maybe we'll be well, safe. You, you, you hear a loud slam as something hits the front door, and then it's almost like a silence. And then you hear the slam again, and then that strange, eerie silence. And then all of a sudden, you begin to see the lick of flame as whatever's being thrown against the store catches the dry wood on fire. All right, well, as the front of the house begins in. to go up into fire. I, I walk out the back Flora. door. <laughs> there is no back door. Flora! We make a back door. No, wait, how do we get in? in you went door. in through the front door. Yeah. You've gone in through the front door every time. Uh, yeah. uh, make really? a back door. Flora! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Farron! Make sure the Maggie knows. I mean, I'm sorry, Lithica! Ah! Wait a minute, there are... I was gonna forget! <laughs> are the windows only in the front? 
Uh, there are windows. Uh, I would say front and sides. Uh, at this point, you like see shack, fire. Right? Yeah, you see fire up on the side. There's a first this second a floor. Townhouse, though, right? um, like if we got to the top, we could maybe lift it over. No, it's cool. not a townhouse. It's a standalone house. It's well, kind of like sitting yes. on a corner. Can we jump? Um, oh, this is an and I would say it's very easy to tell that on all sides, bar the back, there are people that are swarming it and now throwing things, trying to rip off the boards. They're yelling, uh, kill the scarecrow, kill the scarecrow. That's a vampire in there. How did we ever let it in our town? Um, and right all question. manner of horrible things uh, that these townsfolk are yelling so about. Flora. She's got another hour and a half <laughs> well, <laughs> 10 minutes tops. I mean, let's be real. Uh, I'm asking about the windows because if there are any boarded up windows in the back, I'll just knock the boards out. Maybe. There are not. Maybe well, also the house tunnel. is surrounded, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you said except for the back. Oh, that's so so the house yeah. is surrounded except for the back. So the back oh. leads out to a small yard, which was probably what uh, Kaziah Jenkins used to uh, to till and make some of her herbal stuff, and it is completely blocked off by brick walls. And so even if you were to get out there, you don't know if there'd be any way, anywhere for you to go once you were out there. We're trapped. Well, we've waited too long. Maybe Why? We can escape through the basement. Maybe there's a tunnel. I would say you do have something in your possession that, uh... I'll whip out the thing and go look downstairs. <laughs> Roll an investigation check. Thank you. Why is it with Angry Mob that they always want to I'll kill this scarecrow? If I can. Not I needed. Yeah. <laughs> it's natural 20? Natural 20. Natural 20 is an edge of midnight or natural 1. Oh! So oh. With an... <laughs> <laughs> the natural 1s are also that, natural That checks. Ones. I say, with, yeah. with that, Marius and Farron rush downstairs. Marius is looking for any kind of windows, anything in the back that would help. And uh, it is through this that I would say, Marius, you actually find something weird in the stonework down here. Um, and Farron takes and shines the little, um, the little uh, witch's eye that was given to you by Maggie McDuff on it. And you see that there is very clearly a door that is hewn into the stone here that seems to lead directly out the back. Is it closed? It's closed. You imagine now that you see it, you could open it. Oh, okay. And it's at this and point it's... that, I'm, I'm assuming you all went downstairs? I... Or you, you were all downstairs to begin with. Yeah, That's yeah, where you yeah. came back. Um, it's at this point you can hear that the people in the streets have, have officially broken into the house. Uh, you can hear the sounds of them looting things, destroying things, um, tearing the walls apart, uh, setting things on fire. Um, they want to raise this place to the ground. Are we in like a basement right now? Mm -hmm. Is that what we're It's like a cellar, we, right? It's a cellar, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like the ceiling above you is wooden. It smells, there's a laundry machine over here. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bucket of mop. Oh! I can picture it so clearly. There's a dusty treadmill on the bar. <laughs> Classic. There's a, there's a banker's box over here with just one knotted ball. There's laundry all over the <laughs> I mean, probably, probably a winter solstice gift. <laughs> Look at all these National Geographic. <laughs> this goes back decades. There's a shelf with nothing but canned tomatoes. <laughs> these are going to be ruined. It's too humid for this. <laughs> well, the mob gets to you and they kill you. So oh, that was the end of the night. Oh, oh, you oh, 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 Back really, really, they gotta really come downstairs one at a time. <laughs> so I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm with the order. Yeah. 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 yeah, I like the By goddamn time. time, we got to this part of the story. Also, you know, what I mean? you know they walked into a burning house. <laughs> we'll just wait the house and collapse. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. They did, yeah, some of them really did. Yeah, the Usually time, you loot and then burn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next they time didn't. we have the opportunity, I genuinely want to put a line and like actually go through how many people you'd be able to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to like, they probably have like eight hit points. Yeah. Yeah. If, that, if, we're, if they're lucky. Yeah, but he might miss. And if then, they're fake. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 well, What's well, their AC? Nice. Negative. Nice. Yeah. negative. Yeah, it's negative. You can't yeah. not hit them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I would uh, open the door and take a quick look around the room as I'm kind of ushering them through uh, just to see if there was anything that we needed that was like personal belongings to Kaziah that we should just take. I would say anything that seems like it would have been personal to her that you wanted to take, you can. Uh, from a meta perspective, there doesn't seem to... Okay, anything nothing. that was in here, um, they hadn't really found this space, but anything that looks like it would have been in here, she had already taken with her. Okay. 
That sounds good. I take a national before she died. <laughs> That's great. Uh, you you easily open the door and you make your way into what is uh, clearly a rough hewn tunnel. Uh, there is an area where there's some wooden wooden steps leading up to a uh, a like trap door. And I would say for the sake of brevity, it's easy to tell that this was probably how she got in and out through her garden, uh, keeping it discreet so that no one would find it. Uh, but you do see that the tunnel extends uh, quite a bit further. And as you make your way through it, it is damp earth all around you. You can see the roots of trees peeking out of the walls and the, uh, the ceiling above you. And it takes you about five to 10 minutes, not too long until you find another uh, steps up to what appears to be a circular grate, which would have to most people looked like a sewage grate. Um, do we get a sense of what direction we're going? Like towards the cathedral away you out of no the city? Idea. It's twisting and turning and you're completely underground. As I once you're outside, you would be able to to tell. And I would say you can hear from me. This isn't like a sewage grate that you would find today where it's like a big closed off disc. This is clearly like a, a wired grate. Um, so anyone walking over could look down and with the right amount of light, see people standing under it. You can look up and hear, and it, sa it sounds like whatever part of the city you're in is very quiet in comparison to the rest. I would say you can hear a, a few spatterings of moaning uh, yeah. But it seems to be a bit off down whatever road this is. Hold on. I want to like peek my head out in like cartoon style. I'll take my hat off and I'll peek my head out and just literally I'll be sitting on my head. And I just want to do a quick like look around to see if there's anybody oh, nearby. There <laughs> is a uh, roll investigation check. <laughs> Given the placement of his eyes, like, he's literally built for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, investigation is a 13. Uh, I think. Looking, I might be proficient. I might be proficient. I'm not. No, it's a twelve actually. So it's even looking, worse. Ar looking around, um, outside of you see, uh, you see the shadows of what appears to be uh, two people in some sort of sexy time tryst oh. at one oh, end of this alleyway. Right. Uh, the other end, you see that the alleyway itself seems to be completely deserted. Uh, there are bottles of alcohol lying strewn about this way and that, uh, litter, uh, bits of food stuff, bits of clothing. Um, and at the very, the opposite end from the people in the tryst, you see that it opens out into an area that is fairly close to the town center. It seems like the majority of the people who had gathered in the town center with uh, William Van Brunt have made their way to Keziah Jenkins' house. And this is... Uh, quite a bit away from that. So I would say you would know that it's going to be about a 15 minute, 20 minute stealthy time trek to get to the cathedral. All right, I think the coast is clear. It's clear enough. And I'll pull, push the, the grate to the side and let everybody up. I'll um, put my hand on Maris's shoulder. For she will lead you through the darkness and you have advantage on stealth checks. Hot damn. Ooh. <laughs> Mary and Jorgen, why don't you go in the front? And if anyone blocks our path with acts, just knock them out of the way and try not to smash their head against the cobblestones. So you if you guys make a group, like group stealth, that would be awesome. Like chop, chop I think that Mary and, and Jorgen can handle either. <laughs> group stealth, please. Oh, 15. Uh oh. I'm gonna use my inspiration oh. to reroll that. Oh, my yeah. inspiration. I don't want to use them. You have some twists. Yeah, pull a twist out for me. Here we go. And thank you for the fall of Agent 7. Thank you, Agent 7. Welcome to the family. I got a 28. There we go. There Damn, we go. Okay. There to slow us down. 21. That was better. 15. Oh, we'll Bye, inspiration. Were these Sin Hanskas? Yep. Oh! For the twist. Thank you, Hannah Hanska, uh, again, a, if you're still here. I got a 16. Okay. I, know last dos. I got a natural one. Derek? <laughs> Shut up. A 15. Can you read so, it? So, what's the. the this is a. This is a. Uh, feet touch. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. All right. I don't roll it. Yeah. No, no. Otherwise, <laughs> have faith. Well, I mean, I did want this whole session to be peasant killer. <laughs> <laughs> Much uh, better. Uh, okay. 17. Okay. Oh, 16. Sorry. Uh, so it, is, it is with that that you all um, 
utilizing the um, pleasurable sounds coming from the opposite end of this alleyway, you use that to mask the sounds of your footfalls and of getting out of the grate. Uh, as <laughs> as you are... Despacito! 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 Slowly. Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Think about the follow up on the Azure Smash. Yeah, that 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 stamina. Uh, <laughs> intro. Thank you. Um, it is with that that you make your way down the alley uh, in tandem with each other and slowly through the streets of the city. You have started to, started to get used to Cyril at this point and you've learned a lot of the back alleyways, oftentimes trying to go about your business in secret. Um, and though there are times where you find yourselves in areas that are more populated, especially the closer you get to the square, the louder uh, the rackets in the town becomes, um, you seem to move through the city unnoticed. Everyone's so preoccupied with whatever sin they have given into on this uh, penolum Tate night to the... Uh, Sorry, I just imagine the midnight some, some guy on a curb just, I love chocolate. <laughs> 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 the the <laughs> floor, <laughs> and like, you won't be able to get any. <laughs> Potato chips are my weenies. I can't have just one. <laughs> I told you that in confidence. <laughs> Keep it in game. <laughs> yeah, he was doing horrible things with that. that <laughs> Everybody's got a bite. Yeah. You, know, you know this is one guy who like oh. woke up and like looked outside and the town's going down and he's like, I'm definitely too tired for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <stuff> guy. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, I this got that. This chocolate <laughs> cake is sinful. <laughs> is this fat free? De Devil's a demon. Devil's a demon. <laughs> no. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> And so it is with that that you continue to make your way through the streets of Cyril. All the while, you hear the sounding of the gong of the bell in the cathedral as the bell tolls. It feel it sounds like it's it's um, gonging more slowly or ringing more slowly. Um, and at first, the first time it hits when you get out of this um, subterranean uh, tunnel, you feel that same pull of your sin almost overtaking you, but then you feel the presence of that entity that you'd called out to, and you feel a warmth in your chest, and the and the tolling of the bell no longer has any effect, mm. as it is very clear that all of you succeeded in the ritual mm. for the protection of your being. Even your grim. Even for once. your grim. No, your grim turns inside out. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jorgen was, uh, what is he, fucking Slaw's like, sorry guys. Uh, I'm gonna take a my, my, my sleep stroganoff yeah. for lunch. <laughs> my sleep schedule's all messed up. I just don't, uh, I miss my circadian rhythm. I, I knew I should have like, had coffee after 4 p.m. I just can't. What a Jorgen's the strongest of the party. <laughs> But also so lazy. <laughs> I get that reference. I just want them to line up in front of me. <laughs> Is it too much to ask? Oh my gosh. Anyway, I, just had, I had a realization. I'm not gonna say it. He's gonna die. Ooh, wait until Avengers and chill. Uh, as Write it down. Write it down. Oh yeah. As you want. Well. It's now a good time to talk about what we all saw about each other's past. I know that, like, oh, oh that guy's... Oh, it's killing the mood. Just went all along past like a peasant, just doing something horribly degenerate. <laughs> but I feel like we all really witnessed some some really deeply traumatic things about our past, and I, I have a lot of questions. I too, but now is not the time to unpack this as we walk through streets of sin. Jorgen, what happened to your words? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lot of cheese danishes. <laughs> Like if I cram them all down, I can take now. a bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You guys want to take a five-minute break? Yeah. 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 My magical <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna help. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
the five minutes. We got the goofies today. It is Nashville. Thanks for coming, everybody. I do want some more Duchess down the world. So, yes, with your stealth checks, you continue to make your way through the town. I don't remember where you're at, so this is where we're starting. So you're making your way towards through the town, uh, through the back streets and alleys the best way that you can. Nobody seems to notice you. As you get towards the um, the circular uh, area that's directly in front of the cathedral where the fountain is um, with the large statue of Foltis, it is here that you hear a familiar voice, the voice of William Van Brunt. <laughs> as he calls out his lackey at his side, Percy Phipps, Phipps, as they are calling out that they have new information. Um, I'm not gonna do his voice because I just don't feel like it. That's fine. Um, and he's, he's yelling out things of the nature of, they have discovered that Maggie McDuff has been coming in and out of the city of Cyril unnoticed and she must be stopped. But it has also come to their attention that they have the location of her hut now. They're just awaiting the orders from the Archbishop. That's not good. And it doesn't stop there. She is in possession of a familiar that takes the shape of a child. How wicked. The child must be killed too. Oh! What? We gotta kill this guy. We're gonna kill the Pope. We're gonna save Anya. We gotta kill this guy. I'm just gonna say, in, out of character. In what order? And he, he begins to call and yell out, and you make your way to the fringes um, of this area, and you watch as he stands there proud. You hear people shout, um, shouting and calling. You hear uh, once again as he calls out about the weak-willed tools of the witch, the six monsters that have infiltrated their town and brought about this horrible, um, the horrible destruction of Cyril. When they're done with Maggie McDuff in this, um, this this horrible familiar that takes the guise of a child, they will, with the Pope's permission, be slaughtering the lot of you. And he seems so proud and so excited. The, the crowd around him cheers, and you realize that it would be impossible for you to make your way through this crowd and towards the front door of the cathedral. Uh, William Van Brunt is standing at the very top of the steps, almost as like, almost as if he feels that he's akin to the Pope, as he delivers his wicked sermon out to the city in this town square, and they are all eating it up. You see that the people in the back line, uh, you see that Van Brunt's men, um, the guys that were there with him during his fight with Jorgrim, are around the back line doing things intentionally to stir up the crowd. Crowd, but they're also holding weapons at their side and constantly looking back in the alleyways and in the streets for any sign of anyone that they can use as an opportunity for more violence. Phipps. We'll have to find another way in. Well, Yorgrim suggested we try the bell tower again, which is certainly not a bad idea, or we look for some other entrance around back, which I think might have been your suggestion. I don't remember which. Well, no, my suggestion was to sneak in. I was hoping this would be more like in the town square area. Yeah, me too. Don't you worry. Know, I was wrong. I'll admit. Hey, I, I, again, I agree. I thought it was a good idea. You, were, you, were, you had the right idea. Yeah, the you, bell tower would give us the added benefit of severing it from its perch and dropping it onto Van Brunt. <laughs> <laughs> that might draw a lot of attention to us. The entire we... bell tower? I think the bell will do. I think perhaps death is too good. For the well, oh, I'd be fine to deliver it <laughs> to them all the same. We, yeah, we don't <laughs> torture people. That's not what you're suggesting, are you, Lethica? No. Are you suggesting an elongated legal battle with <laughs> <laughs> numerous deals? That would be very costly. Training his entire bank account in legal fees. <laughs> <laughs> Must be time. time is worth more than anything. Is that what you're suggesting? An elongated legal battle? No, what are you? No, what? No. I mean, that would surely lead to a lean against all of his wages. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he owns property, that would certainly he hurt. <laughs> Uh, Let us try the bell tower. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, what I, a wonderful idea! <laughs> I, I will. I can. I can run. Run some rope up to the top, tie it off, and you guys can all follow. Because it's sort of on the opposite side of it the is. door, right? It is on. Um, yes, 
I from, say from where the door is, that's why you snuck in there the last time, is not visible from the, the courtyard area out in front of the cathedral. We steal to the bell tower. Easily. I will use your same rolls for the sake of brevity. Um, <laughs> to make climbing up easier. Uh, you are a dampier, so you climb up. If you have um, enough rope, I'm I would say to... you, you wouldn't even need to do You guys have climbed the bell yeah, tower okay. before. You can all easily climb up together. Steps. Marius in the lead tower. because he is able to scale it as a dampier, uh, making sure, oh, well, that rock's a little shaky. Use this one. And you guide your friends up the bell tower. Absolutely. And you notice as you get closer and closer that the sound of the bell seems to be uh, tolling just a little <clears throat> more slowly. And you eventually pull yourselves up over the ledge and the sound now is just echoing up against these stone walls. And you remember it when you came into this part of the room the first time, it was so overwhelming that some of you nearly turned to your sin. And you feel that pull once again for the first time since your entities uh, slaved it, or staved it off the last time. And you feel that pull again, but yet again, your entity steals you against whatever mind magic is in hold in this bell. It's probably like, it's really loud though, right? It's super loud, which is what makes it harder to, to deal with. And it is then that you hear the sound of crashing and a loud slamming and a guttural roar as Hugo slams down directly in front of you, roars out and swipes at all of you, I need you all to roll for initiative. What? Well, which fucking idea was the bell tower, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yorgrim. <laughs> but he's our friend. That'll that'll teach me to ever agree with Yorgrim, and I've agreed with him so yeah, many times. Yeah, like five times in a row to go to the bell tower like an idiot. What have I done? Oh my god. Oh, well, this is gonna feel- Don't fight him. It's gonna feel really bad when I have to cut his head off. Hey, hey thanks for helping. Hey. We are playing Dungeons and Dragons, as you can see. Very we are. And well, we're trying to. Barely. We're shouting at each other. <laughs> We're playing Dungeons and Dragons, and we're about to fight a uh, a bell. What do you call that? A Fomorian. A fem like a half Fomorian bell tower keeper. It's kind of like uh, Quasimodo a little bit. So we appreciate the follow if you like D&D. &D. We play a lot of that here. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Hope your session went awesome. Uh, Nikki, should we draw a map of any kind, or? Uh, no, just put your minions there. Oh, well. Okay, so I, I'll be honest, good for job. all of the things that I anticipated as we began to approach the cathedral, this was not one of them. Mario, Hugo. Whoa! Hugo? Oh. <laughs> oh my god! Actually, he doesn't need to be. Oh! Please put this oh. down gently. Oh. Damn, look at that guy. Sorry, Wario. Next time, buddy. Yo, Jeez. that's sick. Is That's camera? But he still, oh, but he still uh, sounds like Mario. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed! <laughs> yeah, that's badass. Yeah, it's very really big. Oh, and he's still playing. <laughs> trying to get my voice Did it turn off auto? Did we turn it off? No, we didn't even turn off auto. Thank you for the follow, uh, Pink Emma. Thank is, Emma. Is that the uh, position that you consider yourselves to be in? Yeah, probably <laughs> me and Marius. Face to face. Yeah, oh yeah, I guess probably he dropped Marius down. And... Uh, because he is going to get a uh, an opportunity attack on you since. Um, yeah, right, we'll just uh, marry you. <laughs> None of your perceptions were high enough. Bastard. Your I was in the perception. back for sure. I was probably. I don't know where are you, dude. I didn't see you. Um, so he like, is oh, going to I'm attack right you. You didn't show up to this adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's at the bottom of the tower. And also, Marius. Hey, how's it fucking looking up there? Oh, I'm okay. Australian now. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, he, he's cranky, mate. Are you going to pay champion. attention to this fight or no? Yeah. Come on. I'm sorry. Attention. Cats. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, make it the big battle, battle map, remember? Oh, oh, I need yeah, the big yeah. ba battle I'm map here. for my eyes. Um, so he is going to make, uh, he jumps down and immediately swipes at you. Um, he is fighting with his bare fists. Uh, he swipes in and collides with the side of Yorgrim's face, doing... Jesus. This could set the whole turn for the whole fight right here. <laughs> Do you know what my AC is? Or... Uh, not for that hit. Damn, got me. <laughs> 17 
points of bludgeoning damage as he swipes in to hit Marius. Uh, he misses, and you all you all see as he groans in pain and rage and agony. You see the hood is pulled down over his face. There is blood clearly pouring down from uh, from underneath Jeez. his hood, and it is obscuring his eyes. He easily wrong. missed. Two horny horny guards. Didn't, uh, like, speaking of which, I didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> everyone's initiative: twenty to twenty-five. Twenty-one. 25. Damn. Okay, I'll still go last. With my, <laughs> yeah, with my no, big 18. I got me. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then 21. He is big bad evildoer. Uh, you got an 18? I did. Okay, what did uh, 15 to 15 to uh, 20? Oh, I got a 10. Okay. That matters. And Oof. then I got Fair. 14. Oh, you got a 14. So, so Lethica, Briggs, Baron, Yorgrim, Briggs. Clover, Lethica. I accidentally, <laughs> I, I did accidentally, I accidentally do that. Now. My name right. is Lethica. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no. He, well, he jumps Lethica. down, roars, and yells as he punches directly into, into Yorgrim. He attempts to hit Marius and misses as he wipes some of the blood oh. from his face and... <clears throat> and lets his arm drop and it splatters against the floor and the wall as he as he yells out these inhuman cries. Uh, Jericho, it is your turn. Uh, um, is it very clear that he's like bleeding from, un- from basically blood pouring from his mask? Yeah. Like, his so his, uh, it is hard to see his face under the hood yeah, that yeah, is on him right not, now, not mask, but like, there yeah. is clearly blood coming down from the top of his head somewhere. Uh, I'll uh, immediately uh, not sure if he understands the concept of a bard, but pre- presuming that my band is a weapon, I'll like put it away, and I'll like, raise my hand and I'll say, "Oh no, no, it, it, it's it's your old pals. Uh, we're, we're your good friends, and 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 you look like you're you're having a rough day. I've been there too. I'm going to use uh, healing word as I do that as my bonus action. Um, oh, okay. And then I would like to do uh, six points of healing. To him. Okay. Um, and then I would like to uh, use my action to cast Minor Illusion. And I would like to have a little uh, spinning uh, t- train track uh, made of mist and have oh. the little toy of the Ghost Light Express that um, the Archbishop had uh, smashed, I suppose. And we haven't seen what happened to it, I guess. Hugo yells out at the sound is like the mix oh, of geez. of a scream and a cry. Trick lies witch and he's going to slam as his reaction, slam into and try and disperse the mist. I would say it's easy to see that he is having a hard time seeing with the amount of blood that's pouring into his eyes. He's clearly um fighting at a disadvantage. Shit. Well I, I I'm sorry, Hugo all aboard the ghost lighting spread. Let's <laughs> 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 go. Tun 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 tun. Hugo, it is us. You do not need to be afraid. You are not in danger. We are not your enemies. I will walk up. And I will, uh, I want to reach out and see if I can um, wipe his face clean, but I'm sure he's in a frenzied rage. It'd be almost impossible to get get close to him. So instead I'm going to kneel and and like almost be prone and like see if I can get uh, uh, touch his leg where I healed him the last time. Uh, remember our healing touch. Remember all of this can be repaired. Calm yourself, find peace within. How much are you healing him for? Uh, I will cast uh, Cure Wounds, and I'll heal him for acceptable money, uh, eight of the healing points. You reach down and you put your arms on his leg and you begin to heal him saying these words and you see him stop for a minute and, and he sniffles and he, he tries, he thrashes his, uh, as his, at his eyes trying to wipe the blood away, blinking, trying to blink the blood out of his eyes. 
Mother God. I'm here. No trick, not friend. No and he's going to try and kick you off, but you can tell that he's not doing it as hard. He seems conflicted. He's both scared, but he, there's, I would say roll a, uh, roll a perception check for me, please. <clears throat> It's gonna be a no, I think. I can't remember with a eleven. Eleven. Uh, you can tell that um, he is. He is conflicted. He's scared, but he also is fighting with a belief. Maybe it was something he was told. Maybe it's something that's happened. But some kind of belief that you may not be who you say you are. But he can't see you, so it's hard for him to know. Marius. Uh, having uh, dodged that initial hit as we come uh, around the tower, I'm going to roll around to the other side of him, seeing what Lethica is attempting to do. And as I as I get near him, uh, I'm going to look up at him and say, Hugo, halt! And uh, cast command uh, on him. And uh, wisdom saving throw 15. Thank you. I don't think he's that wise. I don't know. I'm gonna use a twist of dread. Oh! I only get one. Uh, 19. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, so nothing happens. Uh, he is going to, you watch as he um, lowers both of his arms and uh, raises his chest to the sky, um, his shoulders sagging back with the weight of the cages that are held aloft on top of him, and he is going to scream at the top of his lungs, roar. Oddly enough, the sound of this is drowned out still by the sound of the ever ringing of the bell. Um, and he is going to swipe madly for you, unable to find you, um, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't seem to be swayed by you. It's my turn. Um, I would come around the same side as Marius, uh, seeing what Farron had done, oh no, what Lethica had done. <laughs> this is really going to be a problem. Um, and uh, kind of like on his, you know, backside, yeah. I would put my hands up onto Gross. to his leg or what, I don't know how tall he is. However, I can reach. Mm-hmm. Not his backside. I know. Not, like like, his like the, the, uh, the little curve. Oh, his I meant the back yeah. and the side curve on the back of his knee. Is he able to? Yeah, wh- yeah. Wh- his whatever. His thigh. I would just, you know, trying to surround him with kind of the feeling of closeness. Um, and I would put my hands on him and. Hugo, you remember us. We were here before. We are your friends. Please trust us and I'll cast cure wounds on him again. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Tainted Stardust, for the follow. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to the family. Yeah, eight, uh, eight healing. Okay. Ooh. Eight plus eight, eleven. Um, the the healing warms up the underside of his leg. He's he's thrashing this way and that. He's wiping at his eyes. Friends, no wicked lies. And he just continues to scream. It's his turn. And it is his turn. <laughs> um, oh. He is go. I have to make a roll. No, uh, Sir Marius, big bad evil doer. I know. Oh, oh, you went, went he didn't go. Yeah, you flipped I the thought he went like that and didn't hit anybody. No, that was just a, that was a thing that he did reacting in Marius, his. Reacting see, in his. I see. Um, but that's fine. He, um, so I rolled on his emotional state table um, and he is so confused. He feels like he senses the presence of his friends and no hurt friend, wicked lies. And he just, he rocks back and forth and he's like um, squeezing his knuckles, but he is um, keeping himself from doing any kind of attack. He seems like he wants to, but he is holding his action. Why do I gotta be next? <laughs> I pull my. We got a twist of dread! Oh, yeah. Thank oh. you so much, oh, Anantia. Yeah. Appreciate it. You are the best. We gotta get Nikki a coin here. We're running low on coins. Taking on Nikki. It's appropriately cursed. Okay, I'm dropping <laughs> it. I'm dropping it in now. No! Oh. Why every time? Thank you. And you can put it back. Thank you. Good job. I pull my flip lock or like hex lock. I don't know. Figure that out. I pull my gun out of my set. <laughs> <laughs> Your blunderbuss. My God. nine millimeter pistol. Oh, I knew we should have done this last time. 
Do I shoot him? Oh. Are you joking? Don't shoot him! Shoot the bell! It's not a bad idea! <laughs> 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 and I will Eldritch Blast the bell. Roll for damage on the bell. Well, I have to roll for hit or just damage? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a huge fucking bell. Okay, sure, you can just hit it. Sharpshooter. Just roll for damage. <laughs> yeah. If you miss that. You miss <laughs> Shame on you. Well, to be fair, it is here? moving. So, yeah, roll it. Is, it. Yeah, it okay, is moving. We'll, we'll keep your we'll damage keep damage. Those are pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it. There has real never D&D been a more Andy comment comment than that comment. <laughs> oh, what might this? Hold on. Uh, oh, well, it depends what their AC is. What's the AC of the swinging bell? The AC of the swinging seven. bell is probably 12. As oh, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> you got come The on, AC yeah, of a yeah, window is 13. 13. So. Then you're, and, well, I just said it was 12. Okay. So. Then you're good. I hit both for uh, 15 damage. Uh, you watch as uh, Briggsy aims his uh, blunderbuss or whatever it is uh, at Hugo, and then on Lethica's words, he immediately turns it behind him and lets out one blast, two blast, as you watch as it collides with this bell. Um, almost a simultaneous hit causes it to rocket forward. It is swinging faster. It is ringing faster, but you do see a small crack appear and then begin to split the bell. Hell yeah. Well done. Keep hitting it! Swicker? Jorgen. What is Jorgrim doing, not what is Mace doing? Oh no! <laughs> 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 You stand in between me and Anya, I will kill you! Just now feel the flame a little bit. <sighs> Think about that poor child. Oh, you are so bad. <laughs> I think that uh, when he hit me, uh, I would have probably I mean, probably hit me pretty fucking hard. Oh, he did. Uh, yeah, I would imagine that as I shirked to the side, my shovel would have hit the ground uh, nearest, like the point of the shovel would have hit the ground, and it would have triggered the sound of my shovel piercing the ground, uh, a sound that I hear every night in my nightmares as I persistently hear my shovel digging up and and planting into the ground. And I think about my clan and I think about uh, Anya and I won't be late again. Uh, And I think I would uh, I think I would hit him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go! Oh, yeah, yes. you, you gotta do what your character this would do. This is my favorite session of Edge of Midnight. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yes, do it. <laughs> Andy! <laughs> oh, Andy. God, I don't know. This Bad. is the time, I need bro. a spray bottle for I don't this play kid. D&D. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do it. Oh. I I mean, you gotta do what your character yeah, would stay do. stay true, baby. Stay true? It's trees in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm here on a roll here, man. I think <laughs> my shovel would hit the ground, and in, a, in like, I would be, like, in a, in a very, like, triggering moment, and I almost wouldn't even notice what was going on around me. Uh, and then I would open my eyes back up, I would swirl with the mists, and I would cleave into Hugo uh, with the broad side of my shovel okay. and say, get out of my way! Roll to attack. Well done. Oh. Well done. That's, That's, a great great That's really good. So, um, 20. That hits. Spark hits. Very good. Uh, for 12 damage on the first hit, and then... How many spell slots are in this Geogram undoing here, folks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, I thought about yeah, it! Great. I thought about it! No, but you I, did it. You're doing it. Listen! Right no, this is the right thing. Uh, 11, right I, uh, no. Oh, I think I rolled a 3. And an 11 to hit him the second time. Uh, the second time misses. Alright. How much damage? 12 damage, 
Uh, oh, uh, t- uh, 14 damage to him. <laughs> Of the oh my wind fury prompt. You so. you watch <laughs> as you watch as Yorgrim rips his shovel up out of uh, a a spot between two of the stones where he had lodged upon his uh, upon uh, Hugo hitting him, and swings it around and slams it uh, into Hugo's face. Hugo lets out a uh, a yelp of pain as his head flies back. You watch as the hood falls back. He is not wearing a mask because where his third eye had been is now lodged a statue of Fultus. Oh, Blood pouring down out of it, completely obscuring his vision as he begins, you see he starts to cry in pain as he lashes out with his arms. Um, I am going to say for rule of cool and I'm the fucking DM, he's gonna attempt to hit two of you even though he doesn't have legendary reaction. He does have his reaction back. <laughs> And it seems um, pretty lucky. He, <laughs> that's a he's at disadvantage because he cannot it's like see. That time I, gave it I got a natural twenty, but he's at a disadvantage. Holy so shit. um Yorgrim, Marius, I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna flip a D2. You're the Kraken, you're the not Kraken. Yeah. Uh it landed on not Kraken, so it's Yorgrim. Eighteen to hit? Yeah, that is. So he is going, he is lashing out, and you were close enough to him that he smashes down on you, uh, doing <laughs> 16 <laughs> points of damage. Alright. What DMs just feel? Chaos. You just whip it, just start whipping up the shit. Like, oh, the, the amount of time the you guys have done stuff where I'm like, you technically can't do that, but that's kind of cool. So yeah, go ahead. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, really I'm the DM, cool. and I, this would be cool fuck for him to do this right now. So he's yeah. gonna do it. Talking about all so he's gonna of fucking do it. Fucks. And it <laughs> would be a layer good. action. I just should have thought of giving him one. Is so it, he does that is damage. it like bludgeoning damage? Uh, yeah, it's bludgeoning yeah. damage. The lair action is 20 toy train suddenly. And then you, you, see, as, you see as he tries to fumble with his hood and pull it over. You go ugly! You go ugly! As he's trying to pull it over his head and hide the horrible um, mauling to his third eye. A uh, Jericho, yeah, it's luck. your turn. Oh gosh, I don't have anything ready. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I am going to say. <clears throat> How about a joke? <laughs> oh, <laughs> stop the time, Briggsy! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> He quadruple advantage on saving for uh, Hugo. Just in the state of emotion, yeah, there's no joke uh, in history. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, it's um, pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on a second. Everyone, never rule play amongst yourselves. We're in the middle of combat, so we only have six set. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the f- <laughs> when, oh, and I, so I'll, I'll recoil, recoil, as I look at what Briggsy's done, and I'll look and I'll see the the things. Oh, your eye, your eye doesn't look so good, uh, Hugo. All I can say is get bell soon. <laughs> and I can't see these laughter on him. Um, what is he after all? That doesn't do damage though, does it? No, wisdom sixteen. I'm trying to get him to fall prone yeah. to like. I rolled a natural one. He will fall prone, but he does not laugh. He just cries and cries in pain, and in anger and in fear. Um, but he does fall prone and doesn't seem to get up. The fact that he can't get up is seems to be scaring him even more. Uh, he begins. He begins <laughs> oh, no. to start. He begins to start gulping and and uh, wheezing, oh um, crying so hard that he's struggling to breathe. Oh. uh... Uh, well, I think Lethica, you are doing the best with this scenario here. Just, you, you, keep, keep, keep it up. Get, get Belle soon, Lethica, and I give him more good friends. <laughs> okay, maybe stop saying it. <laughs> okay. For what it's worth, I tried to essentially do the same thing, so you just did it better, so I feel bad that you had to feel bad about that. <laughs> that's it, that's my turn. Lethica. <clears throat> um... I'll double down. I will uh, uh, jump forward, and I feel how much pain Hugo is in. I, I see that he is hurt. That is uh, something special about him. Uh, his vision has been taken from him. Uh, I can't begin to process how this happened, but all I know is that he is in 
uh, deep misery and suffering. I want that to end as quickly as possible, but I need my allies to help. Destroy that bell! Stop what you're doing! Eurogrim, get control of yourself! Please, Hugo, I know you are hurting, but we are not, we are not an illusion. We are here, we are your friends, please, please. And I will, I will attempt to, uh, I don't know if I have a, a cloak, but any fabric that you I have. You can have whatever fabric you need I to do am, whatever you I'm, want. I'm trying to um, uh, almost blanket him uh, to, to make him feel like he's in a comfortable, warm, safe space. And, and, and I'm basically throwing myself on top of him, just trying to let him feel that there's another person living this suffering with him to try and stop this panic. And I'll cast Calm Emotions, which Natural. affects your grip. <laughs> oh! That's fucking Each humanoid in a 20 foot radius sphere centered on a point I choose myself must make a charisma saving throw. A creature can choose to fail this saving throw if it so wishes. You can suppress any effect causing a target to be charmed or frightened. While uh, When this spell ends, any suppressed That's effect me. resumes. Uh, I don't know if there are any effects or conditions affecting you. I, this is just deep emotional pain, I imagine, but that is what I am trying to suppress. What's the DC? 16. Wait, you choose the targets, or uh, it's all humanoids? Let me just double check Is that. Fifteen feet. Uh, each human that I choose. Oh, okay. So I'm choosing everyone. Uh, even the fucking bell, if it'll work. And <laughs> it won't. It's not a humanoid. This, it's covered in enough blood. Uh, and I want to get down to like indifferent and bored. Not like happy. I just want to get like away from the negative emotions to it. Just like they popped a zany. A, yeah, a centered place. And DC 16, anyone else who wants to fucking not be feeling calm emotions at this time can roll against it. Uh, and I will spend the spell slot. That'll be the conclusion of my turn. And is it very clear that, like, you cast out this, like, char magic, and you said those words, and then we feel the effect? I would say that there would be a thrum of uh, uh, energy. Um, Do the noise, then. No, I, I, I fucked it up. <laughs> There would be this thrum of energy, but Jesus. that that sound <laughs> is more like uh, crickets coming to life on a calm night day, oh, just, just, just as the sun passes over the horizon as it sets. Mm. Uh, I choose to fail yeah, as well. And uh, what do I have to roll? Bell. Bell. Charisma, saving, charisma throw. saving throw. DC 16 if you want to stay angry. For Actually, me. I'm Bellman. Yeah, I'm mad as fuck. And I choose to fail too. You bell now. Bell. Did you mention the Legendary Patreon? A bell can. Yeah, nineteen. I, I'm still mad as fuck. So you you do that, and immediately Hugo's head lolls to the side towards you. Lethuko. Yes, I am here. Friend. Your very best Marius, friend. Marius, it's your turn. Oh, I was gonna go for the bell. Am I gonna fuck all this up? The bell's still going. The bell's still going. Uh, just shirking off the magic and not really understanding what you were doing and not being nervous. I'm just mad. It's fuck. I'm just uh, saying, if you're gonna attack Hugo, no, I just no, need to fuck know. no. All right. I uh, I whisper to myself, <laughs> "By Lathanda, this is going to hurt." I'm going for the bell, and uh, I am going to rear back with one hand and try to strike the bell twice. Uh, and it's gonna fucking ring my bell, uh, for sure. 3,800 damage to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are pretty good. This is going to be a 26 to hit and a 23 to hit. Those hit? Uh, the AC was, the AC was 12, which we know. Uh, <laughs> the two attacks will deal... Oh my god. 9 plus 5 is 14. Uh, plus 10 is 24, plus 14 is 38. You take your, it's a broadsword, right? What do you long sword. Your long sword. Bridge you take sword. your long sword and you, um, you take the hilt and you slam it into the bell, widening that crack even more. And as it swings back towards you, you shove the blade in and wrench it to the right, completely prying the bell in two. Um, it is still swinging, but it is no longer making that same um, tolling sound. Instead, it's just a um, sporadic clanking sound as the, um, I can't remember what that piece is called, the little the nodule. Dangle. The dangle on the inside isn't hammer, always right? able to, I think, yeah, I think it's called the hammer, right. is not able to find uh, purchase on parts of the bell. Oh, God, it's my arm! And I'll stumble a bit. Oh, and then your arm falls off. Oh, my arm! Uh, that's my turn. And I'll be like, I guess over here by the bell. Hugo turns to 
his turn Flapper. towards you, right. and he is trying to wipe the the blood from his eyes. Let the cop you go hurt. Hugo, Hugo, make Archbishop angry. Hugo, see what Hugo should not see. Hugo, punish. Let the cop. You did not deserve punishment. Whatever the Archbishop did, that is Hugo, on him. Hugo, ugly. No, that is a lie. We are not telling lies now. We are friends. Get it out, let the cop. I will. It hurts. I will. It will hurt to come out, but it, is, it must be done. He sniffles and sniffles. You, you feel as he holds on to part of you, his leg, com- or like his hands completely dwarfing your leg where he's holding on to you. Um, there's a fear that if he squeezes too hard, he could snap your leg in two. Oh, yeah. I'm... Like one of those hard bread sticks of five and You're like a <laughs> yeah, you're you're like a pencil and ice pen. Ferin. Ferin, uh re- I'm not I'm trying not to let go of Hugo. Um he reach into my, my uh backpack, not my bag, and grab <laughs> grab my healing potion from it. Are you sure? Yes. I need you to pour it into the wound immediately. As soon as it's oh, right through. As soon as I pulled the statue free. It's this one. Yes. All right. You ready, Hugo? Oh, you Hugo hurts. You're very brave, Hugo. One. And he lets out the loudest scream that you have heard from him yet. Uh, the sound, uh, there is a, a loud suctioning sound as the statue, which now that you're this close to it, you can see is pure silver, um, is pulled from his pulled from his eye. Um, where his third eye had been, that eye that showed to you that he was not hill giant, but part Fomorian. Um, you see as there's a large gaping hole in the very center that continues. At first, a large spurt of blood spills forth from it, but now it slowly trickles and drips. Whatever fey magic is within him seems to already begin the healing process as you see that hole slowly begin to close up. It doesn't seem like he can see from the third eye anymore, but the bleeding is slowly starting to clot. It looks like it's slowly starting to heal. How long it will take, who knows? Whether he'll ever get the use of that eye back, it's hard to tell. But you now hold within your hand the statue of Foltis. And as you look down at it, you see it covered in the blood of your friend, Hugo. And you see that the head of the statue has been removed. Like it's, it's not in him. No, it was oh, okay. clearly removed before him. Okay, got it. Shit. Now Hugo just writhes on the ground. He is calm, more calm than he had been before. And now he's just rocks back and forth as pain, or in pain as he's saying, Thank you. Thank you, Lethika. Thank you, friends. You're all right. You're going to be okay. Hugo, love you. I love you too, Hugo. And hearing those words, he begins to cry. Just crying and crying and crying. No one ever told Hugo they love Hugo before. Hugo has had a hard past, but there is... There is a bright future ahead of you. I know it. You are very strong. Now you see him kind of steal himself and he he sits up and the blood has sort of have stopped flowing from that eye enough that he's able to wipe his eyes and he blinks and you see that there's still blood in them but he begins to focus and he can see all of you and he <clears throat> smiles at you and it's it's a grotesque sight to see him like this and it is hard to look at but he looks so happy to see all of you as he reaches out and he runs his hand down your cheek or your mask. And you can see that there's genuine joy and affection for all of you. And you see he looks a little scared as he says, You have to, you have to go beneath the, the cathedral. You have to stop him. He's not himself. He hurt Hugo. The Archbishop. He's bad, man. Yes, I think that we... Hungry, beginning... bad man. Mm. Can you take us there? Or... No, Hugo, no, leave tower. I know, it's fair, it's fair. I won't say anything, 
But now that things have calmed down, I'd like to go and see if the pieces of the toy train that um, the Archbishop had smashed are around and then I'd attempt to find it. Um, he's going to continue saying some yeah. things, but in the meantime, yeah. roll investigation to see what you find. Go to, go to cathedral room behind altar switch. Take stairs down, down, down. Dark room. Whispering voices, Hugo no go. It's all right, you stay here and, and you need to rest. Save us, we, we save will. Hugo. We will. We're going to get you justice, I promise. Hugo's scared. It's okay. Um, uh, you know, now that my emotions are clear, I mean, I can now realize, I think we, we, we did this to him, really, because he helped us. It's kind of fucked up. I feel bad about it, weirdly. What the kind of fucking magic is this? Not your fault. You think we are responsible? We did not drive this into he this He flinches morning. and looks away. We mixed him up in all this. I, I'm, I have to understand and agree with where Briggsy is coming from. If it were up to me, I would have had Hugo just run away, but that wasn't an option and I hated leaving him here. But what's done is done, and all we can do is move forward. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna get to walk to the edge of the tower. Now that the bell's not ringing, I wanna look down yeah. to see if I can see any... Like, are people freaking out or, like, wondering why the bell's It looks like they're still enthralled in their sins. Are there multiple bells or is it just the one? It was just the one that was ringing. And you imagine it's just been perpetuating things. Um, But the magics have already taken hold. Like, whatever was underway is underway. And you imagine that the bell was helping. Um, For all you know, the bell might end up being the catalyst. And you could have done something very special here today. Doubt it. We never do that, right? <laughs> or it could have just been a tool that started the entire thing. It's true. It's hard to know. Um, just for your knowledge, I got a 22 investigation. Um, you make your way over to Hugo's bed, and you are um, fussing around there a bit, and you see um, just the front portion of the locomotive, and you reach down to grab the piece. It's clearly broken. And as you do, the rest of it follows along. Um, pieces of ripped up um, dirty fabrics had been used clearly by Hugo to attempt to tie all the pieces back together. And he had kept it with him right there next to his bed. Gosh, this is the saddest thing I ever did see. I'll, uh, while, you know, the, the ladies are trying to calm Hugo down, I'll probably, I'll probably try to clean it up a little bit, and I don't have bending, but I'll just try to, like, in any kind of repair I've done to myself. I don't know if that's written wire, but like just try to figure out how it works and like try to piece it back together in whatever way I'd, I'd, I would be able to. I'll say you you work a little bit harder. You've got, you know, things attached to you, a screwdriver here, uh, something else there because you're a weird mechanical scarecrow. So why couldn't you have those things on your person? Um, and you are able to put it back together in a way that is much more usable in the way Hugo had strewn it together essentially sewn it together. It still won't work, but when given to him, the if you choose to do that, um, it is clearly in a much better shape than it had been before. I'll always be doing that. Hugo, I... Mary, is Hugo sorry? Hugo tried to hurt you? No, no, do not apologize. You must understand I meant what I said before. I hated leaving you up here as we left, and I hate to do it again. You must remember this one thing. If anything else, remember this one thing. You will never apologize for defending yourself. You will never be in the wrong for doing that. You are much stronger than you realize, and you have the ability to defend yourself. Hugo, weak no longer. Hugo, have friends. Hugo, have love. Family. That's right. That's right. Where's your family? If you need Hugo, you call, and Hugo, come. And he looks at you all, and he seems very serious. Hugo, protect the ones Hugo love. We'll Even you to too. Hugo death. It won't come to that. I, as far as my ability will take me, it won't come to that. Go. Time, move fast. Go. We will go. Take care of yourself. It's the way you can help us best now. I'll pull Marius aside while Lepica's talking to Hugo. 
Do you think that we should send him away into the woods? Listen, that was the very first thing I thought of the, the, the first time we were up here, and I just, I don't think he'll go. I, I don't know. He's very strong, but I don't know if he's ever been on his own. And even though it would be best for him to get away and, and make a life for himself, for now, holding up in this bell tower might be the best thing he can do. We could send him to Maggie. Child, they could protect each other. I mean, the townsfolk are obviously scared of him. He's, he's been a, someone to keep the peace, but with everything that's going on, I wouldn't trust them to not make a bad decision. They see him. Wouldn't they be afraid of him? I, I don't know if they're in their right minds to, to be feeling fear. That's a good point. Well, I, I'm i a little concerned. I, does anyone look to see what the state of the crowd and our old boy Billy Bones are doing? I oh, took a look at it. I mean, they haven't. It's like we last saw them. It's absolutely no difference. They even notice that the bell stopped. I thought that perhaps the bell. I'm here now. I thought that the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still cradling uh, uh, Hugo, but we're all talking in a, in a relative yes, way. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, Hugo seems to be calm. I'll say Jericho gave him the the uh, the toy train, and he pulled you in and gave you a hug that hurt a little more than it should. Um, and he is he is dragging the train around, along the ground, choo choo, and he seems very happy. That's real nice. I had, <laughs> that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I'm gonna stay like this the whole rest of the campaign. <laughs> I had thought that the bell was what was enraging Hugo, the way it compelled emotion in us, in us. But that injury was rageful enough. I think that we need to pay Danton Renault a visit very soon. Would you agree to go? We definitely need to at least ask him what's going on. And get his side of the story. Figure out why why that statue ain't got no head. First of all. Second of all, where's the little one? Third of all, tell him not to go rile up that angry mob. Yes. Yes. Let us go find what the uh, rightful place for this statue is. Yogur. Yes? Are you all right? Yes. I think so. Do, do you need to rest? You, you, you took a bit of a wallop. There's <laughs> no time to rest. We should keep moving. Uh, gosh, I, you know, given that I'm the feller with what the demon inside of me, I know this is very hypocritical for me to say, but I don't think we can afford, if you're feeling mighty sore and, and not in your right function, then that might be a risk. If, if, we, if, if we get into a tricky situation that requires us to be calculated, cautious. If the little one is in danger, we could end up doing more harm than good. If you're running in there real angry, do you want to talk about something? Is there, I, I mean, what he's trying to say is when you hit Hugo, I don't think you were seeing Hugo. You've got to keep your eyes clear. I was reeling from reliving my past. When we were creating our soul anchors, I just, I don't want to be responsible for more atrocities. Very admir admirable. If we had not just shared our experiences in the mist, I would probably have very different words for you. But I see now much more in you, and I think we we should we should move quickly now. But I, I I think you will be able to perhaps find some form of redemption. I, I just have one question: Did did that war chief fella 
Did he ever? Ghoul. Ymir Ghoul, that fella, uh, did he get his comeuppance at all in any part that perhaps we may have missed? I... All I know is that when he raised the Morn Hammer and burnt asunder the souls of my entire clan, he was ripped away, he and whatever being he summoned or consumed him. I don't, I don't know what happened to him. So he survived like being a skeleton? I feel that he's out there. I feel it in my bones. Well, I mean, I just want to say, I don't... Based on what I saw, again, I'm just an observer here, but I don't think you're that responsible. You were tricked. I mean, just like the rest of us, I mean, surely some responsibility in being tricked, but I mean, I, I mean, in your case, certainly, you were just doing what you were told. I should have known better. The spirit spoke to me, not to him. It's my blind loyalty and faith. I dug up every one of my clan, and that was just the first. When I walked the fields afterwards, everyone was dead. Yeah, that's rough. And they hadn't just passed on. Never hear them speak to me again. The souls were destroyed and ripped in a torrent of death. The energy harnessed, existing on the fringes of the realms of death, just outside of the Maiden's Lands. As pure energy. Do they look like horrible mist abominations that have a penchant for attacking trains? <laughs> what do you mean? Like horrible, like creepy ghoul type things? I, I think oh, what he's trying to say is, you know, we got to this land via train. Oh. On our way, we were attacked by, I mean, I'm presuming that what you're describing is these horrible soulless soul type things. Maybe not. You yeah. know, it might be just a similarity, you know? In the mist. They were in, in the mist. Let, let's move on. You're going to give Hugo nightmares. Oh. Yeah, that's mm. fair. Anyway, I you, as long happened. as you're feeling good, I want to make sure everybody feels good before we go down there. We've all made mistakes and things that we regret, but you have to move forward and you can't let your, your blind trust be replaced by blind rage. You have to open your eyes now. And if we got to talk to this fella, we should make sure we talk until we get every little bit of information that we can. Because once that moment is past, it's it's past. There's so much I want to ask my best gals. What's in the whys? And because I made a rash decision, I'll never get that closure. And we generally don't get closure, but all it takes is one rash decision to make us never never know what we could have we could have used to live a better life. My mind is clear. Okay. I'm feeling better if you're feeling better. I'm feeling better. So with that... I'll pat you on the back. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. With that, you all gather your things, you say your goodbyes to Hugo, and he seems like he's in a much better state. I promise to Hugo that I will repair his train in full with mending, which I do have if he uh, defends himself and makes sure that he takes care of himself until we see him again. And he promises that he will, and that if you need him just to call, that he will fight to the death for his, for his friends, for his family. Um, and that even though he doesn't have his eye anymore, he does see truth in you. And he does his best to give you, um, give you motivation and inspiration. And he gets up and he walks you all towards the door and gives you the directions to head down the passageway that lead the circular staircase in the bell tower. Um, what 
what um, rooms to go through, what doors to avoid, what hallways to creep through, to get to the cathedral proper where the, um, where the services of faith are performed. And you are able to do that quickly. Um, it doesn't seem like, and he, he lets you know that outside of him and the archbishop, at this moment, there is no one else in the cathedral. And so you are able to make your way through and quickly into the um, into the church proper, the cathedral proper. You're standing in this space, which is open and echoing. Your footsteps no longer masked by anything. If the archbishop is anywhere, he will hear that you are here. As you slowly make your way past pew, past the aisle after aisle, the beautiful stained glass windows depicting images of Fultus, the one true path, all lining the sides of the walls. The iconography in here is beautiful, almost so beautiful that it's hypnotizing. The altar is pristine in the colors of Fultus and beautiful white marbles. Uh, clearly no expense was spared in the creation of this place. And you make your way closer and closer towards the altar. You slowly hear a creak as a door off to the side opens. And you immediately know who it is as you see the beautiful garb of the archbishop as he walks from the side room directly into the cathedral proper. Well, if it isn't the heroes of Cyril, what do I owe this pleasure? He shuts the door behind him and walks over towards the altar and stands behind it with his arms spread, almost as if he's about to get ready to give a sermon. Uh, but you notice strapped to his side, there is a pouch that is partially open. You can see some crumbs on his tunic. He's clearly recently been snacking. Archbishop, we have a few things to discuss. Please, I'm all ears. I have a few hours before my address to the citizens of Cyril. Well, that's one of the things we wanted to talk to you about. Go on, my good man. Uh, there's a man in town, I'm sure you know him, William Van Brunt. Yes, I have heard of him. trying to organize a literal witch hunt. He has riled up the city in quite a way. You're not thinking about allowing this, are you? Catching witches is what we do. Do you not think this a wise idea, Marius? You know witches better than most. I think, given in light of recent events, that this particular witch hunt will help no one. It will be nothing but wanton and innocent slaughter. Then I will deny his request. And what if he's not exactly asking? You see, he smiles. He may attempt to do what he wishes, but William Van Brunt is but a sack of charisma. Behind him there is no hero. There are no witch hunters of Cyril, the likes of which stand in front of me. If he denies my request, he will be walking into the forest alone. The forest will claim him. The citizens of Cyril will not follow if I tell them not to. And he holds his hand up. Follow me. And he slowly starts to stride towards the front doors. Do you follow? Well, uh, that was surprisingly reasonable. Uh, I, I don't think we're quite done, done our discussion yet, though. We don't... will continue it, but let us address this the matter at hand. I, I just looked to Jericho. I mean, uh, yeah. He, he sure, motions sure. for you and he continues to walk. Yeah, no. He walks slowly, measured paces. Occasionally, when he thinks that you aren't seeing, he attempts to sneak a, a sweet treat and he eats it. Oh uh, he eventually <laughs> opens the doors and you hear the crowd roar. William Van Brunt looks nervous as he quickly uh, jolts off of the stairs and down into the crowd. And the Archbishop raises his arms. Citizens of Cyril, I have heard your plea, but tomorrow night marks a momentous occasion, and we need everyone in town available for the proceedings. There will be no witch hunt in the woods. I have, I have prayed to Foltus, and the one true path lies in this city and not the woods beyond. Anyone who wishes to deny this order 
their fate is death. And you see the crowd looks sad for a moment, but then they begin to start yelling, celebration, party tomorrow night, yeah! Party in my house, let's go get a drink! You wanna fuck in the streets? <laughs> and they, just as quickly as their minds were turned who was towards, who was the fucking Danish? Um, just as quickly as their minds were turned towards the killing of Maggie McDuff, they are quickly shifted towards all of the amazing things that they can do in the city. You do see that William uh, Van Brunt looks behind the archbishop and he sees you in the shadows. And you see a look of pure rage on his face. Yeah. Um, as exactly he, right. As he grabs <laughs> Percy Phipps by the scruff and throws him into the throng, kicks him in the back, pushing him down, and he, he yells something like, uh, get up, you moron. Um, get in, bitch, we're going shopping. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, Jason. Yeah. He's just a toady. And they, they disappear into the crowd as the crowd disperses. And some people cheer for the archbishop. He stays uh, for about five more minutes, just waving his hands and uh, follow the one true path. May Fultus be with you. Um, can we, can we do, have a sidebar do not here? give in to the wickedness of witches. Yeah, as while he does he's that. Yeah. Waving. Hey, sidebar, sidebar. Or sidebar. Side, sidebar. What? <laughs> uh, that's, yes, I, that went uh, w infinitely more uh, smooth than I, I expected. I, I know we have a more awkward question at hand, and that might get violent, but I'm confused. We need to get him back inside. A favor done does not erase what he did to Hugo. Oh, absolutely not. I am, I'm certainly not withholding judgment. I'm just acting rationally until we get to the bottom of this. Well, he's done we what agree. we need him for. I'm glad we agree. He, he, well, here's a thing. Maybe he is. Maybe he's just as mind control as all the goons. Well, sorry. out of character, there were three things that you said you wanted to ask. Oh. It was, uh, where's the girl? Uh, Check. Step one. Stop, we... stop uh, Van Brunt. And then what was the third one? It was just the generic, the like, what's statue. going on here? Oh, the statue. Why? Oh, statue with no head. Why is missing? Ooh. Which I think we should ask. Those are pretty confrontational yeah. questions. Well, the the it's going to get violent. You his head and then jam the yeah. statue well, in Hugo's hey, eye. This, okay, you know I found this in Hugo's eye. I'm yeah. back in. I, I, you, what I will say, you, I think you're it? smart enough to know if you show him that statue, he'll know you've been with Hugo. Oh yeah, for mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm, yeah. And is that something you would want him to know? I it's, think that, it's in my bag, and we'll cut. That I would. To. I won't even make you roll in. In, in like he would a hundred percent know exactly where you came from. Mm, this guy also might only take a few more steps in his lifetime. So. <laughs> <laughs> you better think about where he wants to take those steps. So. I don't want to. <laughs> Is there any chance we haven't done anything right yet? Is there any chance keeping all of those townsfolk in the city tomorrow night? It's gonna end up being a bad thing. Oh, that's certainly a possibility. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Um, I, the, 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 the thought crossed my mind, but we certainly don't want them looking for Maggie, finding her, and then killing an innocent child. I think that we said we just saved Matron McDuff and the little one. I think, hooray. I mean, yeah, it's my pride already. If it dooms the rest of them, I don't really care at this point. <laughs> right, well then, you know, perhaps we'll just ask him where. Anya is, and if it comes to blows, we will be ready. Uh, we we heard that she snuck into the. Perhaps I. No, you should ask. I should not. Do we even need him for that? Hugo told us where to find her. Uh, so my understanding is that the switch is behind the altar. In the room is, you're currently yes. in with him. <laughs> well, uh, we don't need him, no. Uh, but I'm sure he would try to stop us if we just help ourselves. I'd rather be Well, then why forward. don't we return his statue and be on with it? And by return it, I mean shove it in his own eye. That's still an option. Uh, I'd prefer if to... The other option is that we shove it into his ass. Oh, <laughs> or that. Oh. I would prefer to keep Hugo out of Although this. Although if it doesn't kill him, then it's just a sex thing. <laughs> so what I will remind you is that the Archbishop has retaliated on Hugo. Yeah. Uh, to, if he finds out that was taken out of his eye, to, Bri to, to Briggsy's there port, could be consequences. Uh, we didn't, you know. Yes, <laughs> we, we, were in, him? we were in. We were in. If I'm not <laughs> being yeah. clear, what to consequences? The if he's dead, <laughs> he can't do shit. To uh, Briggsy's previous point, I agree that we are not responsible primarily for what happened to Hugo, but I would prefer to not involve him further 
in, in, in currently. If we ask him where Anya is and he doesn't give us an answer we like, we can cut his head off. Well, and we, we, if, if there's Don't. magical keys or magical passwords that we need in order to find whatever creepy cell like down below the jail, we need to at least keep his head alive or something that's talking. I don't think now's the time. You're right. And it's with that that the Archbishop begins to make his way back into the cathedral as he starts to close the doors. It's with the grinding of these heavy doors on stone. You have your last moments to say what you want to say to each other before this time shut. Finish what you were saying. Yes. I don't think now's the time to cross him. He's still powerful enough to set fire to 20 people with a wave of his hand. I don't think we beat him in a heads-up fight. I did forget about that. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh Jorgen, uh, the stained glass in here is straight fire. <laughs> oh, it probably took 20 people in order to craft these, uh, each of these windows. Uh, what are these pews nice. made out of? Is this mahogany? <laughs> the door like is slammed shut, like and the archbishop steps towards you and waves you back towards the altar as he makes his way in silence, occasionally sneaking a treat. Um, smacking his lips a little too loudly. It echoes across the room, but he feels like he's being discreet as he stands behind the altar, once again, raising his arms to you. You said there were other pressing matters that we needed to discuss. How may I assist my heroes? I make big wide eyes at Marius. <laughs> well, uh, first off, thank you. Uh, that was extremely reasonable of you, and I, I appreciate you stopping the malice that was potentially about to happen. If the heroes of Cyril say that I send my people into danger for folly, then I will stop at nothing to make sure that does not happen. That is the one true path. Thank you. Uh, as far as the next matter goes, uh, I want to be clear that uh, this is simply a question and not an accusation, but are you aware of a young orphan girl uh, named Anya, being brought here to the cathedral. He looks up and, no, not to my knowledge. Apologize, my phone is, uh... truth, I got his own truth, and I'm thinking about using it. Um, he <laughs> probably just tells me to fuck off, though. Didn't Lefica tell us that at some point he tried to oh, do that's something right. that's right. and yeah. he said, go fuck yourself for this mind? Uh, yes, I would like to discern. <laughs> I would like to. I would like to. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> I thought he killed the vision. You, you know. You know what to do. I would like to discern if he is telling the Inside truth. Inside check. Uh, I think you're the follow of Pauly Schlamazel. Yeah. Oh, I'm a meal Schlamazel to you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Fe -fe 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 Pauly says something really nice, but I can't, uh, I've missed, I missed it. Oh. Thanks, having an amazing time listening. We're having oh. an amazing time oh. you're here with us now. 23. You, he seems, you don't see, you don't, sense anything that seems like he's lying. He seems sure of what he's saying to you, answering the question specifically that you asked. Um, why would you imagine that a child was brought here? Where would we keep a child? In a cathedral. Well, uh, you know, that's exactly what my question was as well. That was going to be my next question. But, if you're so sure that and I'm looking at the rest of the group, so sure that the rest of, uh, that that uh, a young orphan girl may not have wandered in here or been brought here by someone uh, without your knowledge or, or even without you knowing it, then... It is a big cathedral and you're here all by yourself. It is true. Would you like to explore the cathedral with me and look for this girl? Maybe. I would be happy to give you a tour of the grounds. If there's a place you believe her to be kept, I would be happy to take you there. Maybe, maybe she's playing the game of hide and seek and just is a real performer in that realm. Children rail. will want to play tricks. Well, why don't you lead the way first and we will be right behind you. Look, he's being so accommodating. Uh, <laughs> uh, very uh, hard to kill him. <laughs> what I would like to attempt to do is if I'll, I'll suggest maybe a place to start and have him lead us there. And if he's a few steps ahead of us, I would just want to tell them discreetly. I, like, I don't. I don't think that he's lying. I think that he believes that Anya wasn't brought here, etc., etc. Perhaps the pantry. 
And I will say quick, you you are able mm. to do that. Um, he does keep his eye on you. Mm. Um, and he leads you out through the entirety of the cathedral. Every single room, uh, he explains some things about it. Uh, you can tell he's very passionate about Foltis, all the while sneaking sweets. Um, but he takes you through every single room you want to go to. You pass a door that looks like it might go somewhere that he passes, and you mention, well, what about in there? He opens it to show you a broom closet or a lavatory or a closet filled with priest's robes. Uh, he even goes as far as to open some of the pews to show you what's inside of them. Maybe the confessional. <laughs> <laughs> and after a while, he gets so oh. used to Briggsy doing this that he doesn't even flinch. <laughs> and he just allows Briggsy to do what he does. And then as Briggsy walks away, you watch as he goes over and straightens it and shines the silver. Uh, tabernacle. <laughs> I cast a uh, duke to it. <laughs> I cast Choke on Hard Candy. <laughs> <laughs> and then no one would suspect it. And uh, you eventually make your way back into the cathedral proper, and he, unless there is anywhere else that you think she may be. So while we were going through, if there is like a, any like a tabernacle thing or anything that where like relics or things <laughs> might be stored, Roll I, your sleight of hand to see if you can steal no, shit. No, 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 oh, no. Goblin. <laughs> what I'm looking for is if there's a place where it looks like the statue could have been oh. and was then removed from. And like, oh, it was stored oh, here. Like a dusty table roll with a, a nice little square. Roll a yeah. perception check. This is the brains of this operation. <laughs> well, how did that happen? I don't know. Is don't there like, any additional no, silver he's statues? He likes to scheme. Yeah, yeah. He's That's like a really schemer. good scheme, though. He digs for treasure. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, pirate thinks a good pirate has to be pretty smart. Um, or at least crafty. Yeah. Yeah, he's crafty. Exactly right. Uh perce prescription. Fifteen. <laughs> 15? Uh, you are walking God. through the hall closest to Hugo's bell tower, uh, where he mentions to you that the, these are the stairs up to the bell tower. Um, it is where Hugo resides without his permission. He doesn't feel comfortable taking you up there. And seems a little surprised when none of you are, especially with the way you've been, um, rearing to get back up there. But he doesn't seem put off by it and continues to lead the way. And it is as you pass it, you notice a small, um, a small uh, like wall table that is draped in um, religious cloths and effigies. And there are a set of two statues and one is still there fully intact. The other one is gone, but you can see the small ring of wear where it had used to sit on the fabric. Hey guys, I think I saw where uh, the old statue was taken from. You whisper this to the earth. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Briggsy? <laughs> I, 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 I listened to the empty cathedral. Stop fucking saying funny shit when it's like the cathedral. Hey guys! Stolen! So you found Satchel. Yeah, it like was with a bunch of other holy stuff, like this jawbone of Saint Fultenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God! Please. Also, can I roll to steal any kind of like? <laughs> But we still got that. Uh, uh, any any <laughs> bone relic that really no fancy on that table, I would like to steal. Uh, roll a sleight of hand. I want to see a bone. <laughs> Archbishop, tell me of this tapestry. I, it looks very interesting. Oh, baby. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask Crossroads to help me with this one, too. Yeah, okay. Archbishop, go. look over here. Yeah, what I will go. say is I rolled a natural 18. Well, Ooh. I rolled a natural 18, and my plus, hold on, hold on. <laughs> my plus is plus 7, so we're already at 25, and Crossroads really likes uh, religious relics as well, so I'm going to, hold on. This uh, is the Briggs How does this know. work? Um, no, you still feel uh, this. Blood is going to come out of I can roll a d6 and add the number on the check. Yeah, okay. you got it. I hope you get it. Everybody be ready to score. Yes, yeah, that's pretty good. good. This so, is exactly what a fair is. 25 plus that. 29. You steal um, the other statue. The job always. Um, you passed by what was clearly a bowl that had been passed around during the... Um, 
during one of the services that is filled oh, with coins. A collection plate. <laughs> a collection plate, thank you. And you're able to pocket the entire thing, which is which totals around 500 gold pieces. Holy wow. shit, I'll take this. Um, and you also find a small piece of Foltis, uh, st- like a stained glass, that looks like it could have fit in like a nice bathroom. And you imagine on a market somewhere, you could flip a prop- profit on this pretty well, if you can get it back without damage. Oh, but but yeah. it's, a, it's about this, this tall, and it is uh, peaked. We're gonna clean up when we wait, hit markets. So wait, so I stole a statue. You stole the other statue. The other, the other statue. statue. The magic uh, about so five hundred Foltus statue. Gold pieces. Okay, hold on. Uh, oh, Atticus. And lineup. here is where we collect the alms for the sick and the elderly oh, yeah. and the single mothers. He leaves <laughs> one coin. Uh, and the cute feel- injured puppy dog. Collection plate. Collection? Ten, oh, ten you take the plate too. It's a silver collection plate, probably <laughs> worth a good fifty to one hundred gold okay. pieces. Okay. Wow. And then, sorry, what else? What else did I get? Uh, you uh, piece a stained glass window that looks like it could hang on the wall. It's, oh, it's like about this big. it's about oh, a yeah. foot tall. So a stained glass like um, piece of art. Yes. Like they sell yeah, that at uh, the cathedral in BC. Fuck off, dear. Little gift shop. What else and did I get? Here is our gift shop. Anything else? Ooh, no, but that, that's is isn't that enough? Did I also get the job on this thing? Yes, you got the job on this thing. I love how we bullied we bullied the DM into just inventing our own thing. You're amazing. Oh, You're welcome. The, the jawbone of Saint Fultonheimer. 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 His name is my name. Hi, let me write it down. Jawbone. I'm sure I'm that's gonna come to John my, Jacob. Sh- I'm imagining the scene Jiggle like if it was Heimer, animated. We're like brings you have Mary some clothes. Oh, I'll figure out the thing. I also found it was literally just the, the jawbone has come up from stage bottom from the lower frame. No arm motion. Saint Fulton. Welcome, Peter Rothschild. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for Uh, being part of our family. And with that, you make your way back into the cathedral proper, and he says to you, "Unless there are any other areas of the cathedral that you see fit that we should look, that is the full tour that we would show anyone." Well. uh, I've heard, uh, and, and may, perhaps, uh, I know Dresden Vault is a very unique place, but back where we come from, I've, I've heard great bard stories of churches and cathedrals being built atop catacombs. Yes. <laughs> and usually the saints and all of them folks are, are kept in them catacombs. Well, the, the skeleton bar the jaw of Saint Foltenheimer is kept beneath the altar of the church. Well, we shouldn't go. We shouldn't go there. <laughs> what I'm asking is, is that if there is perhaps a, a crypt or, or catacombs where a child might think was an exciting adventure, especially one as precocious as our little Anya, she'd be that'd be the first place she'd look. You're telling me that you think the child found her way into the catacombs and the rooms beneath the altar. It's extremely reasonable. She's a slippery one and likes to get herself into trouble. That Would it from- ease your minds if I took you below? Yes, actually it would. Okay, yeah, I mean, if you're willing. Yeah, he uh, he yeah. looks up at the um, the rose window, which is the circular stained glass window at the very head of the cathedral, and he looks out at where the moon is at the sky, and you see he puts some fingers up as if he's using this as a way to tell the time. We still have time. I will show you if it will calm your nerves. And he reaches for a large silver key at his waist, and he walks behind the cathedral, you and you see that there is a there is a plate there um, that has what looks like some faint, um, it's like a metal covering, almost like a trap door, um, but it has uh, etchings in it and symbols of Foltis, etc. And there is a large lock on it. He reaches down, he unlocks it, and opens it up and you see steps that clearly go down into the underbelly of the cathedral. Um, He moves to the side, he picks up a lantern and he lights it and raises it um, in front of him. Well, we will have to make haste. Um, We will not be able to dally the way we did through the rest of the cathedral, but there is not much down here. A few places for those of power within the church to rest when their time has come, and some ceremonial rooms. I will show them all to you, if you please, if you would like. 
if there's one place where our little Anya would be, it'd be down in the, 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 sp- the spooky catacombs. And yeah, and, exactly. And, right. and once we once we check, and we'll find her for sure. But if not, at the very least, our old pal Yorgrim will be able to sleep peacefully, knowing she's not trapped underground. We need the heroes of Cyril more than ever, and I need you to be at peace. So if this is what must be done to give you peace, I am happy to do it. But I will need a moment. And you see as he turns towards the altar and opens up a side placard. So you don't need to roll for it because brevity. Um, And you watch as he pulls out a large sausage and begins to just devour it before closing the door, wiping his face off and turning back towards you. Let us proceed. And then he he begins to... (laughs) (laughs) And he begins to make his way down into the crypts. And you do find yourself in a crypt beneath the... Allergies on your face. (laughs) (laughs) I like to put my Carmex all over my face and my nose, so sorry it's a little oily. I need to eat some sausage (laughs) and then enjoy (laughs) sarcuterie. As he uh, as he's leading us into the catacombs, I want to like lean lean over to Big Z and just say, uh, yeah. I, "I wonder if he's like wondered what happened to the High Inquisitor, or if she's just like mysteriously gone missing, or if he's like missing his twist with her." It's only been like yeah. a few hours I guess since I'm just you killed her. It's only been like a few hours. It just feels like <laughs> weeks. Not as weird. Yeah, because we lived oh. whole like lifetimes in oh. each other's shoes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's I'm probably trying. been like five or six hours, but I mean, at this point now, I mean, he might not oh, be needed until so tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Welcome to our family. Thank you, Amarna, for the 30 months. Oh. Wow. Thank you, Amarna. Thank you. Holy moly. Well, then I'm glad I didn't say anything out loud. I was going to straight up ask him if he'd seen the High Inquisitor. No, no. That would have been atrocious. <laughs> I think I'm going to ask him a question. Uh, uh, I noticed that... And this is where Sir St. Foltenheimer was buried <laughs> after the defeat of... The, I'm sorry, what did you say, John? Oh, yes. Uh, well, I noticed that uh, when we first came uh, to visit your, uh, your humble city, uh, that you had a whole clergy here, and they don't seem to be present in the cathedral present, at least, at the present. Uh, are yes. they perhaps outside enjoying the festivities or angry mob at you? No, they have been summoned house upon house to produce, or to uh, perform exorcisms. Oh. 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 Are, 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 there, are there spooky ghosts about? Or demons? Mm. Do you think they could exorcise me? <laughs> this is the uh, this is the tomb, uh, and he continues to explain. Do you he walks you through. On Saint Fultonama? No, um, and we'll he continue. And I'm, I'm writing. He continues to show you through <laughs> the catacombs, and you eventually. It is not very large. There aren't that many here. Um, he even shows you the place where eventually he will be buried. Um, and oh, you uh, like you off. get towards the end where there is an arched doorway with a grate, and he looks for and finds another much older uh, ornate silver key and uses the lock to unlock it. And you see that from this point forward, where the catacombs you'd been in before, where the walls were even made out of skulls and bones. Um, think the catacombs under France. <laughs> um, Going forward, the stone matches exactly the stone that you saw in your visions. As he leads you through twists and turns, and um, you don't pass any rooms. It's all just hallways and hallways. Um, And he leads you through it all until he gets to another door. This is, you will find a room that is empty, but it is for thoughtfulness, for praying, and he pulls out that same key that he used, the really ornate one, and he unlocks the door and swings it open. And as as he ushers you inside, he stays out in the hall, um, or not stays out in the hall, he gets like right into the door. Um, and you see that this room is almost like an exact match size-wise as the, um, as the cathedral room above. Um, these stones themselves are pristine and beautiful. There is light in here and it is completely empty. But you are looking at it. It is that sense of deja vu. This is the exact room that you saw. You can see in the center where that um, where that pole had been, where Anya had been tied up. You can see the area completely clean, no signs of blood or anything at all, where the goat had been decapitated. 
and it is very clearly this room. Well, I want to thank you for your time. This has been immensely easing, uh, for me at least, my, my mind. I don't want to speak for anyone else, um, but I do feel much better now. While Marius I'm is glad talking to hear him, it. I'd like to discreetly, um, just the thing dangling from my staff, the witch's stone, is that what we're mm-hmm. I'd is like that? to peek through that. Uh, you peek through it and you see just an empty, empty room. Okay. It's a large room. It's large. It's, and you can tell it's the exact one you were looking in. It's just through the vision, it was much harder to really see the scale. And you are, I would say you're easily able to mill about and inspect and look at the walls. And the Archbishop seems happy to answer any questions that you may have. And I need you all to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Oh no. Well, it's seen well, seven as long, as long as she doesn't change the music, we're gonna be fine. Uh, oh, this is called are Medieval you Whispers. Kidding me? It I shouldn't got a be ten. Let me see what I got. I you should still be you honest. may twist this. Yeah. I'm gonna stick with a fifteen. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna get my you kidding? You need, you need at least uh, I'd like to twist as well. Oh, I changed oh, thing. Got one from a one to twenty. You making yeah. me nervous. <laughs> I still take one for you take one for me. I did. I'm sticking with fifteen. Thank you, chat. I have a five. Uh, oh boy. Would you like to twist it, Mike? Wisdom? Yeah. Not charisma. No. Wisdom. I'll do one twist. Oh, I'm actually proficient. Sorry, boy. We got, we got, we got twist. Yeah, we got twist. I got twist. Lethic is going to be okay. If um, everyone else melts into a pile of gold, Lethic is going to be all right. I got a 23. I got okay. a six. 21. Okay. 15 sounds like it might be the lowest here. Oh, so you're saying you that the, uh, Jericho. The natural 20. 26. Fuck. Zero 22. <clears throat> Every single one of you, uh, oh, you feel um, you feel a pull inside your head for just se- like a split second headache, and all of a sudden, in the center of the room, you see the effigy of Mother Night, the effigy, the effigy that you saw in the crooked house, that you saw in um, that you saw just hours ago, but this time the body is that of a small girl with the goat's head attached to where the neck should be. Clearly. Anya's body dangling from the pole in the middle of this room as the goat's head sits atop the stump of the neck. And then just as quickly, your eyes adjust and the room is completely empty. There's nothing here. You all look around frantically for a moment and then you see the room start to come together. You see a pool of blood off to the side, the body of the goat, no head where a head should be. And then a few feet away from it, the head lying there with its tongue lolling out of its mouth as the blood pools out of the skull. And in the very center of the room, exactly what you had expected to see when you walked into this room, the pole. And lying in front of it, tied up and wiggling and crying, is the form of Anya. Completely alive, completely unharmed. You hear the sound of smacking as the Archbishop chews on candy behind you, not paying any attention whatsoever. What do you do? Can I ask? Sorry. So we see a, an image of her body with the goat, and then it and then it flashes, it again. flashes away, and then, and then you see the blank room, and then all of a sudden your eyes begin to actually see what's really here. Okay, and so that she is that Anya is has here. not become that effigy yet. Okay, she is laying at the foot of the pole, but all the pieces for the effigy are there, and in the very center okay. of the room is that runic circle, much larger, um, much. It, feels much stronger. And the archbishop is either he is, different or not He's different not even at all. doesn't seem to I, what I will him. say without needing to roll an insight check, he's not even looking into the room. He is um, he's just chewing on his food and he seems completely nonplussed. He brought you to a room that was empty. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. I was going to almost as like stoically as possible without giving a single thing away turn towards the door to look at him and just see how he was reacting but you've described it as such i i don't like even want to say anything because i don't know you you are archbishop may i call you vampire you may call me archbishop <laughs> fucking ass <laughs> i'm fucking <probably> mad <laughs> so on you is wriggling now what are you gonna do towards i'd slowly walk to towards cool. the center of the room uh how, how far away am I? 30 feet. 
Uh, I, would, I would probably like. Yeah, think about a cathedral. It's huge. I would slowly walk towards her, and as I like realize it's it's really her. Like you know, it's not like a like a mind vision thing. I'd I'd start running at her. You run at her, and you're able to <clears throat> crumple to the floor in front of her. You, um, I'm just gonna say, you do these things. You begin to pull the binds from her hands and from her mouth, um, and you look down at her, and she looks up and she smiles at you. There are tears. Um, new, fresh, new tears coming down from her face. Uh, you can see the the white outline of the dried tears that had that had dried maybe hours before to her face. Your kids, you. You're okay, little one. You came to save me from whatever is happening here. Of course, you're not in any danger anymore. She reaches up and she puts her small hand on your cheek, and I need you to roll a per, uh, perception check for me, please. Oh boy. This is, this is gonna go south real quick. I know, oh, I'm like God. so anxious. And before you <laughs> push my face, before you, I slam before 50 you continue yards into narrating, the wall. This might be a cheesy oh. question, uh, but when I made the w- wisdom saving Fuck throw, you. did it have any sense, did it feel oh, like my crossroads? Did it feel like any no. connection? Okay. It did not. That's not a cheesy question, that's a good one. Okay. Oh boy. Eight. Perception, you said? Perception. I'm proficient. Um, and it's an eight. All right. You know what? <laughs> twist, Fuck twist, it. Twist, 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 twist. I, I use my own twist. inspiration. We're twisting it. We're twisting Just it. Twist it. Yeah, oh, we're twisting it. We need this one. Big money. I'm just gonna give it to you. That's not big money. That's worse. That's, That's worse the same money. Way I got the first give time. yourself that twist back two, because two, two. I think this is narratively important. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> okay. as, as she caresses your face, you reach down and you hold her small head in your giant orc hands, and you look into her eyes, and. The green of her eyes is different. And there's something different about her face. You can't quite catch it. And then you watch as the eyes shift to brown and the skin below her eyes begins to sag and her body begins to elongate as she lets out a loud cackle. (laughs) You are so stupid. Stupid Jorgrim, I'm going to follow this little girl. I'm going to give her her storybook back. I'm going to protect her from all the evils in this land, all the while giving me the tools I need. I miss you too, Jorgi. Thank you for saving me, your mother midnight. And that is where we'll end the session. What the fuck? Derek called it. (laughs) I'm so mad Derek was right. What always the right. Fuck? You are not always right. Don't you ever say that to me again. I've got DM brain. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. I have. Oh my um, god. I had so many theories that you just blew completely out of the water. I'm going home. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. No adventures in chill today. Yeah, oh, We're man. just gonna fucking There's leave. No, chill. no, we got There's a lot chill. to talk about. We're going we home. got a lot to talk about. Punishing us because we were goofy earlier. No. Uh, How could you do this, Nikki? Actually, Avantress and Chill. We'll talk about it in Avantress and Chill. Yeah. Oh. What's Avantress and Chill? And we're not done. What's Say next? it angrier and then maybe we'll talk about it. All right, again. all right. So, <laughs> Avantress and Chill is after every stream session of D&D that we do, we switch to a segment at the end called Avantress and Chill, where we talk about our favorite moments, we theorize, which we're going to be doing a lot of tonight, I have a feeling, and most importantly, answering all of your questions and comments in chat. Uh, we'll get to all of them. So stick around, hang out with us, ask us some questions, ask the DM some questions. Sometimes she pulls back the veil a little bit. Um, and we got a lot to talk about. A lot of good stuff happened tonight. So, Question uh, number one. Why? Why well, did you do that? That's not going to be answered tonight. <laughs> I can promise you that. But don't go anywhere because we're switching over to Adventures and Chill right now. Uh, if you're new and you got to jump out for the night, join our Discord. Uh, we hang out there yes. between sessions. Yeah. Uh, we also have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting us that way with a bunch of cool new, uh, exclusive perks. Okay. Um, Hi, and uh, our monthly hangout is coming up uh, pretty 27th. soon. Right? On the 27th. 27th. So at Mind Flare tier and higher, we do a monthly patron hangout. Um, and it's a lot of fun, and we're just chilling there. So, yeah. uh, we're That's gonna cut Sunday. over, and if you're heading out Derek tonight, but otherwise, out. stick around. We're not actually going anywhere, we're just starting